friends. Welcome to Coding Garden. Uh, welcome to a Friday stream that will probably be pretty chill. It's not going to be um, very coding or content focused. We're basically planning. This is a planning stream. And thank you, Pablo. Thank you for the uh, 25 months. Is that true? Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty awesome to be Christmas anniversary. Um, oh, it's unfortunate to hear that you have COVID. Hopefully you feel better, Pablo. But yeah. So yeah, it's going to be a chill stream today. We are going to be uh, figuring out what our next Friday project is going to be. So if you've tuned into the Coding Garden over the past two and a half, maybe three months, uh, we were constantly working on Fresh Spots, um, which is this app here. And uh, we actually didn't finish it. There's still <laughs> a lot of work to be done. Um, do I know what this pull request is? Remove access token from example. Wait. Really? Give me a second. <laughs> what is this pull request about? Oh, oh. Um, I'm okay with that being there. Okay, I was about to say, did I really commit a, <laughs> a thing? No, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the public key that goes for the, uh, for the map token. This, this is okay. This is okay. Uh, but Brixis, Brixius, thank you very much for that eight-month prime breeze. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, welcome in, Zandal. So Fresh Spots was something that we did every single Friday. We only worked on it on Fridays. So if you tuned into the Coding Garden on Friday, uh, you could be sure that this is the thing that we were working on. Um, over on my YouTube channel, there is a playlist of every single episode where we worked on it. Um, uh, essentially it was 18 episodes, all of them, some of them were pretty long. Um, and like I said, the app isn't done yet, but it, it's in like a somewhat workable state. Um, I really just got tired of it. It, it didn't spark joy anymore. And it was very frustrating to work on. Um, uh, but we're going to come up with a new one and, uh, a new idea. And that's the thing we're going to work on every Friday. So indeed, thank you very much for that prime sub. You're new here. I appreciate you. Welcome to the Coding Garden community. Um, <laughs> hello, everyone. Welcome to the Coding Garden with CJ. Today, we're going to launch season two of the most anticipated show on the planet, The Friday Project. Yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of people liked the consistency. They, they liked that if, if they missed a Friday stream, they could go back and watch the VOD. They could stay up to date. And then if they tuned in, um, they could get an idea of what was happening there. So, yeah, I have a couple of things in mind. Um, yeah, and, and that was the idea with Fresh Spot. So I, I wanted to convert it. The She Boss. <laughs> you're too kind, the She Boss. And I know you've been busy lately because you're not as active, but I appreciate you. You show up every single time and you give subs every single time. And I really appreciate it. Uh, everyone, just give some hearts in chat uh, for the She Boss. Uh, they are a key member of the Coding Garden community. And uh, yeah. Uh, I just realized that I missed the advent of code streams. Um, I was probably here, but not paying. Uh, no worries. I, I did. I think I did one stream on YouTube. It wasn't even on Twitch. Yeah, you're very busy. Yeah, that's. I understand. I understand. But yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you for being a a consistent thing here on the Coding Garden. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, okay. 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 Um, but yeah, so Fresh Spots, when, with the last episode, you can see me talk about it. If you look at the playlist on YouTube, uh, we basically converted it into a community project uh, <laughs> in that uh, there are now GitHub issues. And if someone wants to come in and work on a feature or fix a bug or clear up some of this technical debt, they are more than welcome to do that. Um, it is a lot though. There's still, there's a lot to be done. And a lot of this, is, I am calling chores and technical debt because I was, I was kind of like doing my best to write the code with best practices, right? Like I, I didn't want to just hack it together. I wanted to set a good example. Uh, but that requires a lot of work. And sometimes we did take shortcuts so that way we could just get the thing done, but we made note of when we did that. And ideally those things should be cleaned up and cleared up and refactored which is what a lot of these these uh, tickets are. <laughs> and it's not dead. I, th I think like ideally maybe once a month we do a stream where we can we can pick one of these issues from FreshBots and we work on that. Um, and we do our best to keep the project up to date. But that was the last Friday project. What is this Friday project going to be? I don't know. I have a couple of ideas uh, and I was just kind of like typing things out um, 
before stream started and and I basically have idea constraints because if we think about <laughs> yeah, it's like, and, and okay, so Mark mentions entropy chat. There are there have been a lot of projects on Coding Garden that we either stopped working on or we forgot about. But the main reason that typically happens is that it stops bringing me joy. Right? Exactly like Clicky Poo is saying. Like once the project becomes cumbersome and it actually feels like work, uh, it's just not fun anymore. So when we whatever idea we pick, I want it to be something that will be long lasting that won't be too frustrating. Uh, it should be an idea that is like potentially useful, like something that, uh, like a, a potential product that people could use um, uh, or a product that we could make money from. Um, uh, cumbersome is the coder's fault. I mean, I think it also has to do with the fact that I'm streaming myself develop these things, right? So, um, it gets frustrating when I'm doing it live and I get a lot of like dissenting opinions and and stuff like that. But I guess that's not even really the main issue. Um, it's just a lot of times it's hard to build things live because so many people are watching and so many people have opinions. And Decramok, thank you for those 10 bits. I appreciate that. Or Degramok? D. Gramic. Thank you for the bits. Um, also, it needs to be entertaining, right? So this is something that we're doing every Friday. This is something that brings people into the stream. People find my stream because I'm doing this thing every Friday. So it needs to be entertaining. Uh, and people should care about it. <laughs> so these, these are the constraints for the idea that we come up with. Um, and I'm, I'm open to ideas. I do have a couple of ideas here, and we can talk through those. Um, but this list of like technologies and stuff that we potentially would choose, this is what we came up with last time we were... Uh, we were figuring out something to do. Yeah, and Xerox Gamer, I think, uh, I don't think we could create a better Jira, but uh, in, in talking about ideas that were popular on my YouTube channel and potentially would be more popular would be to uh, create a uh, Kanban board slash uh, scrum board. Kanban slash scrum board. Uh, because pe people like real time, people like drag and drop, and it would be fun to recreate something like this. Now, it's not an original idea, right? Like things like Trello exist, but it would be fun to build from scratch. And in the past, I built like a small version of that, uh, which actually did get a lot of people to find my YouTube channel because they were interested to see like how I built that thing. So, um, yeah, and so I've, I've, I'm pretty much already decided that I'm going to be using Next.js, pretty much. I, I I could I could potentially be convinced of Remix, but along the lines of I want this to be fun and um, as little frustrating as possible, as minimally, minimally frustrating. Um, yeah, and I think that's the thing killer is like clones of apps, they do really well because people want to know how to build those kinds of things. But And that's what I'm getting at, Mark, is like if we use Remix, that means we have to use React. And I typically don't have fun with React. I can do it. I've done it a lot. I can teach it. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Cat and Jack says, just watch uh, some of the Panzer walk and he's the best. Oh, thank you, Cat and Jack. Yeah, so um, uh, my dog's name is Panzer. You can see a clip there. Um, and actually, do I have... Maybe that's a separate command. I thought I had a link to the VOD where I took him on a walk. Oh, well. But uh, if, you, if you follow my... Um, uh, my personal account, W3CJ, I do IRL streams, and we did one where uh, I was uh, walking my dog. Oh, it's in the GitHub Frequently Asked Questions? Cool. Okay. Check out the frequently asked questions and thank you for that, Cat and Jack. If you go over here, you ask about my dog. There's a link to the the Twitch vod where uh, where I took him for a walk. Yeah, it's a good point, Killer. Uh, like, and I think that's the thing about choosing React. Like, if if we build this thing with React, it has a much wider audience, right? Because there are more people that are wanting to learn React than anything else. So that is a thing. However, uh, Freshbots was was Preact, which is basically React. Uh, so I kind of want to use Nuxt because of ne Nuxt 3, which is now uh, stable. That said, it is very new. It's only recently gone from release candidate to stable, so yeah. 
Uh, you want me to do all the legwork of finding useful packages for solid? Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, I'd love to choose uh, solid and use like solid start. It's just, it's still in beta. Like, uh, one of the main things about fresh spots is we chose fresh, we chose Dino, both of those very new technologies. And I want to choose something that's stable. So we, we, we're less, we can use community packages. Like, we don't have to do everything from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Clicky Poo. It was way too new. So we, we, I want something that's new but also stable. And and Nux three uh, is based on Vue, Vue.js, and it's been around for a long time. Um, and I did use the Nux three release candidate in like a small app that I was working on. So Nux three seems like the way to go. Um, I don't want to use Dino and Fresh again. We potentially could use Next.js. I mean, honestly, like if we are talking about and again, I'm just being completely transparent, talking about this out loud. I'm open to your opinions and everything else, but React, Next.js, like these are the things that people click on, right? This, these are the things that people want to see. Um, it's not necessarily the things that I have fun with or that I want to use, but uh, we could make it work. We could make it work. Uh, and then uh, SvelteKit is really cool. They had a lot of major changes recently in the documentation. Uh, hasn't been updated. So honestly, I'm just going to remove SvelteKit because I don't want to deal with outdated documentation or hard to read or hard to find documentation. So uh, overall, SvelteKit is really cool and, and I use it. So if you go to the Coding Guard website, this was built with SvelteKit. It's awesome, but it's it's not ready. It's, it's uh, I mean, not, not that it's not ready. It's that it's not totally ready for public consumption because they, the, the, the documentation needs a little bit of work, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Nest.js really is just an API framework. This doesn't really give us a, uh, a front end. Formidable, I don't even know what that is. I don't know why I put this on this list. We could look at Redwood, but I think Redwood also is like a back end thing. Planet Scale, I thought was just like MySQL databases and stuff. What is Threlt, Oscar? Use Next for a smaller thing? Yeah. Yeah. Threlt is a renderer and component library for Spelt to build and render 3JS scenes. Ooh, nice. But the um, I guess I didn't clarify. This project will be a full stack project. It's going to have a front end, a back end database. It's going to be a full stack project of some kind. Um, I do want to use Prisma for this. Prisma is our is our thing of choice because I haven't. I mean, I've I've I looked into it and built like like a small little project with Prisma. Um, but I want to build a full-on project with Prisma. I want, I want to see what it can do. I want to write complex queries, complex have complex relationships. I want to see how it handles that. So uh, we're going to use Prisma for sure. Um, I don't think we'll choose Astro because this is not a content-based website. It's not like a static-based website that we're going to work on. It will be an interactive application with a front end and a back end. The T3 stack, I mean, ultimately, we might get close to that if we choose something like Next.js or Remix, because um, then TRPC would make a whole lot of sense. Um, I definitely wouldn't use Tailwind, but yeah. And we already decided against Solid because it's new. Now, it looks great. But it's it's just too new. We want to find something or use something that um, has been around for a while and has a lot of community support and community packages and stuff like that. So why no Tailwind? I mean, so I want to avoid choosing too many new things for this project, right? So uh, and Mihai Andre, thank you very much for the four month resub. Um, I've only used Tailwind like twice at this point, and. I want to learn Tailwind properly. I don't want Tailwind to be one other thing tacked onto what we're learning, uh, because for me it's frustrating, and I don't want that to color my experience of Tailwind. So, uh, whenever we really do decide to learn Tailwind, it's going to be its own separate design-focused project. That's another thing about this. This is not a design-focused project. We will use pre-built components of some kind, um, and we're going to focus on the 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 application architecture itself. Not, not, there's less focus on design and styles and stuff like that. OK. I think that narrows our list down to, to these three things. Uh, and Mishiko, thank you very much. Or Moshiko, sorry. Moshiko, thank you for the, the 110 bits. I appreciate that. Uh, so, so all of that 
did I, I haven't discarded Remix. I've actually heard a lot of good things about it. And really it would be like, we would choose that over Next.js. Honestly, it could be interesting to combine uh, like TRPC with Remix. Honestly, we might use TRPC no matter what we do, because we could use TRPC with Next.js as well. Um, and I don't, I don't have Angular on the, on the list because I don't have a lot of experience with it. I didn't say no React. I just said I, I wouldn't prefer it because I do, of these three things listed, I like Vue.js a whole lot more. I like working in Vue a whole lot more. Um, I don't think anyone used TRPC with Remix. I mean, you can, like TRPC is like, it's, I guess they technically do have uh, the TanStack query integration for React. But you can pretty much get it working with any React app. And Moshiko, thank you for 170 bits. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Um, don't use React, I'll regret it in two streams. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll I think like we'll we'll talk about this a bit more. Um, we'll also talk about ideas. But let's welcome everybody in because there there are there are more people here now. Let's say hi to everybody, and then we'll actually get into some of the ideas that I have. We'll vote on an idea. I will say that I have... <laughs> Mushiko just keeps giving bits. Thank you for the 20 bits, Mushiko. Are you just like emptying out your account of bits? Um, yeah. Is full stack JavaScript good enough for a big complex app and team project like an ERP system? I mean, it could be, but this is a very general question, right? Like, uh, I don't think you should build an ERP system from scratch, right? Like, why, why would you do that? Why, wouldn't you use an existing thing like Salesforce or uh, SAP or something like that? Like, you, you would potentially, I think uh, full stack JS would be a good fit for uh, like a client, like a Salesforce client or a front end to an SAP back end or something like that. But I don't think you would ever build your own ERP system from scratch, right? Right? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Um, maybe that's not even what you're asking. Okay, let's say hi to everyone. Uh, and again, thank you, Pablo, for the, the 20, 25 months. That's awesome. Uh, would Svelte without Svelkit, but other router solution be option? I guess, yeah, I mean, so I guess here's the, the thing that I left off the list that I actually like a lot is Feathers. And the reason I left it off is because Feathers v5, Feathers dove is not out yet. And... I don't want to build something with the old version of Feathers because Feathers v5 is going to come out next month. Literally, this will be out next month, and it's not stable yet. And I don't want to choose it because it's not stable, but it then and use the older version, which we would then just have to replace when it comes out in a month. So that's why Feathers isn't on the list. But honestly, I, like Feathers would be great. It would be cool to use Feathers as a back end, and then I would be more open to using like Solid JS on the front end. But yeah. I think it'd be quickly limited in trying to scale a JS backend compared to a C Sharp and Java based one. I don't think you can say that without knowing the specifics of the problem, right? Like any problem that can be solved with C Sharp or Java, you could you could solve with JS as well. You could argue that some of the backend frameworks for uh, for C Sharp, like the .NET uh, ASP.NET API and then like Java Spring, they're more focused on like enterprise backend applications, but you could look at something like Nest.js, which is a, a backend framework for Node that is very well structured for like large enterprise apps and stuff like that. Um, so when you say scale, um, it can mean a lot of different things. And I mean, you could absolutely horizontally scale a Node.js app just like you could scale any other app. I don't know, all I'm saying and not to attack you for making that comment. All I'm saying is we need a whole lot more context to even say that JavaScript won't work for it, right? Because JavaScript and, and JavaScript backends can do a lot of things. They can do all the same things that any other general pro purpose programming language could use or do. Um, but that is aside the argument that a lot of JavaScript de developers aren't actually that good at code organization <laughs> or, or working in large architectures, but that's not a JavaScript problem. That's a programmer problem. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, like it. Uh, let's take a step back. Welcome in, everybody. Everybody, just smile and chat. We're going to welcome everyone in. Um, and, and here we go. <laughs> Nest.js is a trap. I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even going <laughs> to talk about it. But, like, the reason I would say Nest.js is because it is so opinionated, right? It basically... Um, it's built for enterprises. It's built for large applications. Whereas Express alone... You could use it, but it, it, it lets you make all the decisions. So you need to be really good at organization and architecture if you want to build a good app with it. Welcome in, everybody. Let's say hi. And uh, 
Here we go. Here we go. Uh, if you want me to acknowledge you, say hi, hello, hello. Hey, yo, cheers, greetings, hi, up, what's up, morning, afternoon, eating, evening, howdy, good day, coding, hi, bo, hi, or, or boga, hey. Say any one of these things, um, and I will acknowledge it. I will say hello back to you. I will notice you. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll start talking about what app we're actually going to build. Um, all right, here we go. Hello, Mark, from an hour ago. Yeah, the calendar was wrong today. I'm, I'm sorry about that. The calendar was an hour behind. Uh, but we're here. We're live. And welcome in the SheBoss. What's up, Coder Mutahai and Krasatko and Origin and Unknown. Uh, what's up, Code Renaissance and Cat and Jack and Moshiko and Farshid and Dramodi and Clicky Poo and Excavator and Pete Pal and Fob and Oscar and Forward and BTRSL and Pablo and uh, Tenkaminen. Tenkaminen? Tenkaminen. <laughs> what's up, Pop Leaf and Vulture Bite? And the Almighty Aaron and I am Roos and I Stash or I Tash. Hello, what's up, Shing and American 2050 and Zandal and Dislodged and Finder the Ice Wing and Veeb and Part Time Married. What's up, Chief Mustardo and Nesby and Tanner and Gorav and Jim McDonald and uh, Mihai Andre and BJ Sebastian and uh, Lucius and welcome uh, Torofun and Jaikom. Uh, what's up, Singfield? Hey there, what's up? Uh, and uh, Kil Kiljisa? Kiljisa. Kiljisa. Welcome in. <laughs> what's up, Salino and Killer and Zero X? 45 feety, welcome. What's up, Nico? Uh, an extra system and Matt and Mike the tree climber in. Uh, welcome in, everyone. Uh, and it's 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 Choop. <laughs> welcome in. I'm having a hard time pronouncing names today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, the calendar page isn't deployed yet. It still needs some updates. Meow. Meow. <laughs> Welcome in, everybody. There's lots of new names in the chat today. I appreciate you all. Thank you for being here. Uh, maybe you found me because you're not typically on Twitch, but I appreciate you. Thanks you. Thank you for heading over here. Um, be sure to check out the Frequently Asked Questions. That tells you all about who I am, what I do, and all the stuff that people frequently ask, so definitely check that out. And uh, I do have a YouTube channel, and I will say I, I just released a YouTube video, so... Um, uh, if you if you want to support me, definitely go uh, go check out that video that I just published. And it really is just it was just a clip from stream. Um, in a way, I was thinking of this YouTube video being a way to get new people to come watch the stream because they get a better idea for how the interaction goes. Because I do like reading most chat messages and and getting everyone's input and stuff like that. So yeah, and part time married. Thank you for the uh, the two month reset. Appreciate that. You had a good idea about what the project could be? All right, let's talk about it. First of all, though, let me apologize to the person that said <laughs> that, that uh, uh, Milk Sunwoo. If you're still here, I'm sorry I immediately attacked your question and, 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 and said that. But really, my whole point was, like, it's really hard to talk about these things in a general way in Twitch chat because um, I get what, what you're saying. You potentially worked in JavaScript code bases. You have had the experience that, it's, that maybe they didn't scale as well. But... That is just one experience, and there are a lot of other experiences. And obviously, you can't come, you can't uh, put all of your experience, all of that can't come across in a single Twitch message. That's really hard to do, right? Which is why I I talked about it in that way. I don't know. Thank thank you for your your comments and participation. Um, choose the idea or the technology in this case. So because we already know, and all right, uh, we're transitioning now to talk about uh, tech stack ideas, all of that good stuff. But let's let's start here. Because I already know that this needs to be a full stack project. That means it needs a front end. That means it means a back end. That back end is going to have a database. Um, that back end is going to have like a user system and auth. Uh, the front end is going to be like uh, multi pages and sections and possibly like a role based. So like different sections and pages based on the type of user, um, these kinds of things. So because I know this is the kind of app that we're going to build, my choice for technology are these uh, uh, back-end frameworks, right? And so I, I'm separating front-end and back-end here. And actually, if any one of these three that we choose is actually a combination um, uh, a combination of 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 front end and back end. It actually like it's everything's mixed and hybrid. You don't really have to separate them anymore. Um, so, but I mean, the thing is, I'm describing a lot of full stack projects, right? Like a lot of apps um, are are this way, right? And and so th that's why, like, typically, um, you you really you wouldn't necessarily choose the technology before you you know what idea you're going to be or thing you're going to be working on because not all. 
applications are this way. Not all applications have both a front end and a back end and a user system and, and everything else like that. But this this app, I want it to have those things. So uh, that is why I am I have these on the list of things to choose. And and again, we said we weren't we weren't going to use feathers. Um, but yeah, I, I agree, BTRSL, who said <laughs> I think this would be an intro video for the project. Um, I'm I'm honestly just frustrated with myself because I spent so long editing this 20 minute video. I don't know where the time went and I don't know why it took me so long to edit this 20 minute video. Like this is literally just an excerpt of what happened on stream on uh, Wednesday. And I was really frustrated this morning because it was like three hours later and I'm finally done editing the video and I'm like, was it even worth it? I, I don't know. I think it was a fun, it's a fun conversation and like a, 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 a very popular topic right now, chat GPT, but all of that to say, do I want to even edit this into a YouTube video? <laughs> I don't think I do. I don't think I do. But I, I, I was thinking that same thing as I was talking about, like, what are we building and why would we choose these things? But yeah, I think there potentially will be some social aspects, but it doesn't have to necessarily be just like a social network or anything like that. Um, how would you go about transitioning a vanilla app to Vue 3? Uh, like one piece at a time. It depends on what kind of app it is, but um, you could actually just drop a Vue.js script tag into the page one at a time and slowly convert features. Um, if it's a larger application with multiple pages and stuff like that, you might as well just generate a new Vue 3 app and slowly port the features over. There's a lot of ways to go about it. Yeah. You? No, I mean, we're going to stay uh, TypeScript and JavaScript focused. I guess, I guess that's the other thing is whatever we choose, we are going to use TypeScript. Um, TypeScript. Full stack type safety. Now, that probably means we're going to use TRPC, whatever we, whatever we use. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, if you watch the YouTube video about ChatGPT, then I, I explain what it is at the beginning. What's up, Shark Turn Up? Um, ChatGPT is on the curve of hype. It's it's tricky because like it's really impressive. Like ChatGPT is super impressive. So it's like yes, it's hyped, but like for good reason. Like yeah, yeah. Like watch this. Watch this. Um, Give me 10 ideas for a full stack app that has a database and authentication. Oh, Oscar, I didn't think about that. We could build a mobile app. That actually could be cool. Yeah, it's thinking. <laughs> There's probably a lot of people using it right now. It's, you can see the, the three dots. All right, we'll, we'll let it, hopefully it'll respond eventually. You make a good point, Oscar. Like our front end actually could be a mobile app. I don't, I don't think I want to do that though. I, I do want to focus this on like being a full stack web project. Okay, here we go. A social media platform, a task management and productivity app, an online marketplace for buying and selling goods and services, a ride sharing app, a recipe and meal planning app, a fitness and health tracking app, a language learning platform, an online education and tutoring marketplace, a budgeting and personal finance app, a customer relationship tool for business. Eh, I mean, these are like pretty generic, but still like these are good launching off points if you want to if you want to pick one of these ideas. Oh, I forgot the word fun. Yeah, you're right. Um, some kind of thing that is real time. Yeah, I guess that's another is it poss possibly like WebSockets real time. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, and the reason I say maybe is because like I, I, this is a perfect use case for Feathers JS. But again, Feathers is in a transitionary time, and I don't want to choose the old version before the new version is in 1.0. We could just like do WebSockets from scratch, or just like Socket IO from scratch. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. You had a Stack Overflow answer withdrawn because of ChatGPT. Did you, I mean, did you get the answer from ChatGPT? <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the ideas, Mark. It is. Uh, I'm going to catch up on chat, and we'll talk about ideas. Uh, Netflix clone? Well, 
one of the ideas is a coding garden video browser, right? So not necessarily a Netflix cone, but, but we can take all of the 500 videos that I've created over my coding garden career and turn them into a more consumable website that keeps track of what videos you've watched. It can suggest related coding garden videos. So we could have our own suggestion algorithm that keeps people on coding garden, right? Cause if people are watching coding garden on YouTube, they're going to get sucked into other suggestions and stuff like that. But if they come to my site, I can suggest other videos by me that I think they would like based on what they're currently watching. We could also keep track of their progress. Like there are certain videos and, and series that I've done that you could call like a learning plan. And, uh, you could put those into like a tiny little course where like it keeps track of what videos people have watched and how, how far they've gotten through the learning plan. And then uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time is to have article like written articles that go along with my videos. So um, uh, any given video also has like a blog post written about it. And then it's also synced with the video. So as you watch the video, if I'm showing a code example or I'm talking about a specific thing, that thing is then highlighted and automatically scrolled to in the content itself. Um, so you have like a uh, the best of both worlds because a lot of people will learn better or, or prefer written content or written tutorials versus watching videos. So now you have both. And um, I mean, I argue that you should learn from both because uh, different modalities help your brain think in different ways. So that could be a cool thing. Um, all right, uh, let me catch up on chat and then we'll talk about the other ideas. Uh, no, no, so I guess the other thing is like, we're, we're gonna use TypeScript because this is going to be a big app. We want full stack type safety. That's why we're gonna choose TypeScript. Um, and I know. Uh, <laughs> The thing is, like, I get frustrated with TypeScript when I'm working on something that is inconsequential, right? When I'm working on something that I know I'm not going to look at again or uh, I need it to just work, that's when I get frustrated with TypeScript. If I know that we're building an app and it needs to, it needs to have long longevity, like it needs to exist for a long time, when other people come along, they need to be able to easily pick up and, and understand the code, TypeScript is the way to go there. So we're going to do it. Yeah, I mean, if we use React, we could use Tanstack Query. I don't know if they support Vue yet. No, welcome, welcome in uh, QSF. Been following for a while. Don't really talk much. Kudos for doing this, for your patience for explaining things, for being a true entertainer. <laughs> I think we all agree that you could be getting lots of money working full time for a company, but you still choose to be here with us. I appreciate that, uh, QS, because I know that I can too. <laughs> I know that I enjoy this more. I enjoy hanging out. I feel like I got off to a rough start today. I'll be honest, I was like very frustrated this morning with my video editing thing and like some other stuff happened in my personal life. So like the moment stream started and I started talking, I was like not as positive as I normally am. I don't know. Yeah, they did it. Next three is out. Next three is ready to go. Um, <laughs> sorry, CJ, I'm busy. Yeah, we're talking about chat GPT. Um, I asked for 11 ideas, yeah. IRL streamer companion app. Yeah, that is something I want to work on, but it doesn't make as much sense to be a full stack application. So add fun to the prompt. All right. Give me 10 fun app ideas that will get a lot of YouTube views. Here's the thing. It's probably going to come up with like clickbait stuff, <laughs> but let's see. Um, I actually have a really funny thing I want to show you with ChatGPT. Uh, I'll see if I can get it to do it again, but if not, I have the screenshots saved that I'll show you. Um, we're working on Next 2 and saw Next 3 midsummer. Started to consider migrating, moved into RCA. Yeah, so I built a very simple app with the release candidate, um, and it was fine. So I'm hoping that the latest version will be all right. I don't know how long this project is going to take or how long we're going to work on it, but... Um, I would say at least a month, at least four streams, four weeks. A ride sharing app, but like Twinder. Wait, so you, you can request a ride, but if you don't like the driver, you can swipe them. Is that what you're saying? I don't know what Club Penguin is. Yeah. Oh, go for it. I'd love to hear your idea, uh, QS. The CJ browser? You mean like the Coding Garden video browser? Yeah. Uda Garden. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. And I, and I think the this could be cool because 
now as I release new YouTube videos, I could I could think about them more as how do they fit into this Coding Garden video browser versus how are they going to perform as a YouTube video. Um, that's where I'd like to be. I mean, you can already see on my YouTube channel that I don't do the things that normal YouTube channels do. Like, I don't have clickbait. I don't have crazy thumbnails. I just don't want to do that. But in not doing that, I'm basically not playing the game, right? So the, the algorithm is not going to pick up my videos. I'm basically dependent on my existing audience to watch the videos and suggest them to other people. Um, and I think a website like this could do that, right? Because it, it creates more discoverability for, for more of my, my content. And this is what I want to do, Killer. So this is actually another app idea. I mean, really, these two could be one in the same, right? So, But this other app idea is a repository for all of the questions I've ever answered on stream. I don't think I even have a good, like, the, the tricky part about this idea is it's just going to create, it's going to first take some human work, some human time to annotate. When did I answer a specific question? What were the timestamps? What video did I answer that question in? But... Uh, I mean, this playlist has 50 streams of Q&A. There's even more than that. There's probably uh, over 100 streams where I just spend several hours answering questions from chat. But if we had all of that annotated, right? If every time I answered a question, we know what the question was, we know the video where I answer, answered it, and we know the timestamp, we, we now have a huge repository where, where any beginner could come along, type in a question, and they can see my answer to that question. Um, so... That's another app idea, but it, it's specific to me answering questions, not necessarily like all of my tutorials and project apps, but uh, this would be amazing. I mean, like I said, it's going to be a big undertaking to annotate all of the old Q&A streams. We probably could get some assist from an AI or something like that uh, because we can get the transcripts from YouTube, uh, but once something like, like this exists, exists uh, yeah, it would be it would be a huge learning resource for people because I, I answer a lot of the same questions multiple times because I can never remember what Q and A stream I actually answered that question in. So, yeah, that could be that could be a thing. I guess the other thing is we don't necessarily even need to annotate or ca or, or uh, categorize them by hand because if we had all of the transcripts, we could potentially train an AI on that with like the transcripts and the video timestamps. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you, PJ. <laughs> uh, I think that would be fun, Veeb. I, I don't think... So the ChatGPT doesn't have an, an uh, API right now. And I think whenever they do have an API, it'll probably be like a paid service. But it would be fun if we pull this up when we're doing coding improv and like ask it for some ideas or put in some prompts. Yeah. <laughs> Club Penguin's a 2D game where you can create and customize a penguin to chat with people, play mini games, and make friends. Interesting. I I'm not as drawn to that idea though. Something with payment. Uh, I mean, this this is another thing that actually I haven't really done on stream. I've done it in my professional work because I worked as a, a software engineer for a long time um, where uh, the apps that we would build a lot of time would be like subscription based. So, uh, I mean, we would build the app for a client, but that client would then be the owner of the app and the code and they would want a subscription model where they could essentially charge people for using that app. Uh, so. We could also think about, yeah, maybe we can incorporate a way to actually make money with the app because most of the things that I build on stream are uh, really just demonstrations of ideas. I've never really talked about how you can lock down features to say that, oh, you, you must be a subscriber to, to use this feature or you must pay $10 a month to use this feature or something like that. So it could be interesting to incorporate that. I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but it could be interesting. Um and I think that's that's the other tricky part about creating something like this is ultimately, I don't want to build this back in from scratch. I want to use like a CMS to do that, like auto load YouTube videos in and then have an admin dashboard where I can go in and like annotate the existing videos. Because if I if I were building this product myself, that's how I would do it. I wouldn't 
necessarily like create my database from scratch and design the whole thing from scratch. I might actually use a content management system to do something like this, but I don't know. I don't know. An upload feature. Yeah, so where were we thinking about that? I had an idea earlier that I thought would involve like user upload. Um, that could be cool as well. Feel free to throw out little ideas like this. It doesn't have to be a full idea, but that can get us thinking as well. Yeah. Yeah. Transcode video files. <laughs> um, train chat GPT with your transcripts. Yeah, I don't think you can train it right now, but that would be the way to go, right? We find an AI that can be... Oh, really, there, I think there are existing train models for like basically Q&A engines that we could train on my video transcripts. But I really, I don't think that exactly would do what we want though, because I want people to be able to watch the video where I answered the question, um, not necessarily just read the answer to the question. Yeah, and I, like technically you could look at the network traffic for ChatGPT, but they don't want you using ChatGPT outside of the website right now. An algorithm that publishes each question you answer on the stream to catch to a catchy short YouTube video. <laughs> I guess that's true. Like, I answer a lot of questions on stream though, but I could see that happening, right? Like the moment I answer a question, it's instant, instantly clipped, cut down, and the title is the like the name of the, the, the question that I just answered, right? That would, that'd be slick. That'd be slick, <laughs> but um, yeah. Strappy probably would be the CMS. Um, that we use, but, and I guess with, if we use like a headless CMS like Strappy, we could still pick and choose what we use as the, the actual framework. You can't build payment systems on Twitch? That's crazy. I guess I could look into it, but that's crazy. Maybe it's like, if they're doing work for an actual company, maybe that's what they meant. I don't know. A knowledge-based system that actually incentivizes people to keep the information up to date. Makes information discoverable by auto-linking to related information with the help of some AI. Cool. I mean, it's kind of like this idea where like my Q&A knowledge-based system, but you're thinking about it in a more general way. Yeah. What's Wagtail? Don't know what that is. What's up, Musies? We're coming up with ideas. Well, that's what we're doing right now. Um... I never heard of Actix. Maybe we talked about it in the past? I don't know. Catch up in chat messages. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> um, true, American 2050. I have, to, I have to be fast here. But you just slowed me down because I was trying to understand what you were saying. <laughs> Can you write, ask ChatGPT to write a blog for a video and send the URL? I don't, like, we could try it, but actually uh, some of the stuff I was playing around with last night, I was like, uh, create a script for a 10 minute YouTube video about X topic. And it did it. I don't necessarily necessarily know if it was like 10 minutes worth of content, but I actually thought that would be a really cool YouTube video idea where uh, the preface to the video is like, this video was written by ChatGPT. I'm just gonna be reading the script and then also like editing the video to add like overlays and interesting information and stuff like that. Um, but it can generate YouTube scripts, yeah, so. Yeah, that's the thing. All right, we're going into 60 second slow mode just so I can catch up on chat. If you need to send a message, think about it long and hard. Make sure you know what you want to say before you hit enter. But let me catch up on chat and then <laughs> we'll go from there. Um, okay, you did a text with your idea. Let's look at it. Work in the entertainment business, uh, designer and light operator. Work consists of designing from the stage to the final structure of the audio visuals of major electronic music festivals around the world. Nice. Uh, artists such as Martin Garrix, Armin Van Buren, Tiesto. That's awesome. Time code. Audio noise that defines the time at which everything is in sync. I see. So like um, for like visualizations on the stage and like lighting and stuff like that. They're governed by time code. Okay. WASM can read and decode the time code so that it can be used within a web system. 
Interesting. Great. Thank you for typing this out, uh, Q QS. I, I appreciate it. I don't know if I want to do something that's in, like not in my area of expertise, right? Like the, the thing is like somebody who is interested in this kind of stuff could build that app for you. I, I def and you could probably find them in the coding garden community. I don't think I want to work on this specifically. Um, but I think the thing is there, there are a lot of things like this in a lot of different industries where it's just waiting for someone to come along and build something accessible and useful and, and more usable. That's going to overtake like the existing ones that are, uh, not easy to use and cost a lot of money. Um, cause like working in a software consultancy that, that would happen a lot of times. Like somebody would come to us with an idea they had, which was similar to something in the market, but, uh, they wanted to do it faster and cheaper. Um, and they, they had more ideas around it, but it is an interesting point you bring up. Um, because I mean, that's another thing I was dealing with being a software consultant is like a lot of the existing software out there that needs to be replaced or that people didn't like to use was like desktop based software, um, or things that couldn't work on a mobile phone or in a web browser. So like, if you can take these existing app ideas and make them work in a web browser or make them work on mobile, um, you actually have a really good uh, product idea at that point. But yeah, thank, thank you for typing this out. I don't think it fits with what I'm trying to do specifically. Um, but someone out there will, will see that and, and build it with you or build it for you. Uh, let's people ask questions and they can pay me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it could be a little bit like that. Like there's there could be a separate section of the app where it's like, pay a dollar to ask a question. I mean, I don't think I could do this because I already answer questions for free. <laughs> but it could be like a, an exchange there where it's like, if you pay, I don't know, we could increase the price so that uh, it's only for rich people, right? Or people that have the money. <laughs> they could say, if you pay me $5, I will attempt to answer your question. I don't know. I, I don't like that as much as well because like, I also don't know if I'm going to be able to answer your question, right? Like I'd rather be paid afterwards if I did a good job answering the question. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the idea for 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 this Coding Garden video website. It's just bas basically like Coding Garden YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, you could look at the network traffic of ChatGPT, but it's against their terms of service. You're not really supposed to be doing that. I mean, I think technically chat GPT is based on GPT 3.0. So if GPT 3.0 has an API, which I think it does, you could tap into that. Right. Right. I see. Yeah. I've done a little bit of drag and drop before. Not a lot. Yeah, Tanner. I mean, this this goes along the idea of some of of some of the education app ideas that I've had. Like, th this is especially prevalent in uh, the programming and coding world because people, um, um, uh, what was I gonna say? specifically self-taught programmers and coders, uh, they kind of do build their own learning plan, right? Like they decide, oh, I'm gonna watch this course on Udemy to learn something, or I'm gonna watch this YouTube video, or I'm gonna read this article, or I'm gonna learn this thing. They are, they are coming up with their own curriculum, essentially, their own learning plan for how can they learn the thing that they need to learn and eventually like get a job or eventually build the thing that they wanna build. Um, so it would be nice to have a platform where people could organize those resources, right? Like they, they could essentially uh, also create learning plans for other people. They could say like, these are the videos you should watch if you want to learn these topics. These are the projects you should build afterwards. And then uh, that kind of thing. So I, this is a really cool idea in terms of just like uh, uh, education and, and self-learners being able to like be in charge of their education and their, their learning path. Yeah, and moderator dashboard is another thing that I've been wanting to work on, but I haven't had the time against Steam's to discuss, oh, I see. So like if you're building a game, you can't talk about how much you make or something like that. Actix is a framework for Rust. Okay, maybe, oh, I see. That's what they were talking about. They Okay, that makes sense. Um, 
Somebody mentioned like rust earlier. What were they were they mentioning? I was like, that's a good idea. Like, what was it though? I'll, I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll come across it again. <laughs> that's not mysterious. Uh, I have thought about this message very well. Nice, nice. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad Q uh, there's quite a few people that added QS, so that, that's awesome that, th that some connections are happening here. So, I don't think you're red in my chat, Steven. Are you? <laughs> Rich people don't ask questions. They give answers. Well. <laughs> Multiplayer game could be fun. Yeah, the only issue with that is, like, I don't have experience building a like a scaled multiplayer game. So I would have to do a lot of research into like, what are some good game servers we could use? Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just so out of anything so far out, away from anything I've ever done before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, th this is, this is a tricky part of like creating a video on demand website. Um, I wouldn't do that. All, all right now, this website would be completely based off of YouTube videos. Um, eventually, when my when I have my own course website, it will be based around. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be served from a CDN, and you'll need to be logged in to watch it, and it'll be I'll prevent it from being embedded on other websites and stuff like that. But yeah, the current idea I have is all about existing YouTube videos. Nice. Pinterest for learning. Did they call it that? I don't think they did, but that's a good way to put it, right? So basically, it's a collection of learning resources that you can share with other people. Interesting. You've tried uh, GB3, GPT-3 API. Conversation was pretty basic without context, I see. Lead code for binning minimum, minimum, minimum viable products. That reminds me of like front end mentor. Or not, is that what it's called? There's a website that has like front end projects, which that, where it's, it gives you the prompt and like the, the wireframes or the images and you just have to build it. That's similar to like leak code or code wars, but for like front end. Yeah. Web based DAW. It would be f cool, but it, I don't think it really fits into this idea of like full stack. Like, I mean, you could do that mostly just front end. Uh, the full stack aspect comes in if you want to like, if you want users to be able to save their patches and projects, not locally, but like in the cloud. But yeah. Uh, and in Shalom, thank you for the three months. <laughs> no Pinterest. Well, Pinterest was just how we can refer to the idea. It's basically, uh, users can create collections of learning materials, custom like learning paths or learning plans, that kind of thing. A website for sharing year specific videos. Isn't there a, I feel like there, there's a website you can go to where you choose the year and it'll just show you like random commercials from that year and like random little videos from that. Front end mentor, cool. Yeah. My take on the future of front end devs in 2023. Um, I think, I mean, it kind of, uh, I kind of allude to it um, in this video I just posted where we were talking about chat GPT where I think the more mundane and simple front-end tasks um, will absolutely be automated. And any, and any front-end dev that was getting paid to do really mundane things or things that are easily automatable, automatable um, they're going to be out of a job. But my argument is most a lot of people aren't just programmers in that way, right? Like a lot of us have original thought. A lot of us have original solutions. Um, a lot of us are building complex architectures and 
that's not necessarily something that ChatGPT can just come up with and be immediately usable. You're always going to need an expert to like validate the solution that ChatGPT comes up with. Um, and so my, my, my argument or my ideas around AI and ChatGPT are going forward, some of the lower level jobs are gonna be automated away, but more and more AI and ChatGPT will just be uh, a way for humans to move faster and build things faster because chat gpt can suggest something an expert can validate it and then we can go from there versus the expert having to come up with the entire idea and, and the entire code does that make sense that's basically my that's my thoughts on, on where we're going um so yeah micro SaaS solution Ooh, ooh, yeah don't tell me it don't tell me your idea keep it to yourself <laughs> um Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the other interesting thing. And I honestly, if we want to talk about, actually, I want to make sure that I don't lose chat again. But right, so we're talking about Chat GPT coming up with uh, uh, tags for YouTube videos, descriptions for YouTube videos, titles for YouTube videos. That's a really interesting thing. I want to touch on that. Um, oh, the messages with star backgrounds are resubs. These are all the people that resub. <laughs> we built that <laughs> recently. Uh, Website for sharing and saving illustrations. I don't know. I'll show you, Eddie. I'm about to show you some cool stuff that ChatGPT can do. <laughs> uh, I think it can. It, it, it could probably work. Like, so if you look on the the blog post that talks about ChatGPT, that's the exact example that they show. Someone pastes a block of code and they're like, hey, ChatGPT, what's wrong with this code? And they're like, I need more context. And the person types some and they're like, oh, well, this line of code should be this. So it would be interesting if it generated code and then you told it the code was broken and then it actually fixed that broken code. But yeah. Cool. All right. On the topic of ChatGPT coming up with YouTube titles and ideas and stuff like that, one thing to think about is the YouTube suggestion algorithm is already AI, right? Um, and we kind of talk about this on Wednesday, how a lot of AI is really just a, a black box. We we actually don't understand or, and we can't figure out or know how it's coming to the conclusions that it's coming to. It's basically a black box that has inputs and outputs. Um, so if you have a, like an, a suggestion algorithm on YouTube that's suggesting new videos for people and we don't know how it works, but then someone is able to essentially like game the system, right? They're, they're essentially able to um, uh come up with YouTube titles or YouTube descriptions or different things like that, where the AI is now promoting them, but we actually don't know why it's promoting them. So that's that's something interesting that could be happening uh, and, and potentially will happen is um, people will figure out how to game the AI algorithm that suggests other videos. Um, and I think people are doing that in certain ways right now already. And also with like view boosting and view bots and stuff like that. Regardless, let's see what ChatGPT had to say about this. Give me 10 fun app ideas that will get a lot of YouTube views. A virtual reality game that allows users to compete against each other in exciting challenges and adventures. Um, that's a pretty general and generic idea, but it's kind of just like, yeah, a multiplayer game, sure. A social media platform for sharing funny and entertaining videos, okay. Uh, an app that lets users create and share their own memes. A platform for live streaming and watching live performances by musicians, comedians, and other entertainers. It's really just Twitch or YouTube. A virtual pet simulator. A game show that lets users compete against each other. Cool. These are fine. All right. I want to show you what happened last night. Um, um, and let me see if I can get ChatGPT to do it again. Uh, what are some YouTube channels for learning web development? It's, it's taking, I feel like a lot of people are using the website right now. <laughs> uh, there are many YouTube channels that can help you learn web development. Some popular ones are The Net Ninja, Traversy Media, Learn Code Academy, Code with Mosh, Free Code Camp. Uh, <laughs> that's fantastic. That's great. What are some other ones? 
Yeah, so the data that it was trained on is only up to till 2021, so it's not aware of current events or anything that's happened like in the past year. There's the coding train. Wow. <laughs> No, I'll, actually, I gave it a prompt in Coding Garden. What is its first answer? So Chat GPT knows about Coding Garden, which is pretty cool. But the, so I'm trying to I'm trying to use the same flow that I used last night because if you ask it certain things, it'll immediately just say no. It'll be like I'm a I'm a just an AI trained on certain information. I can't answer that question. So that's why I'm I'm trying to warm it up. I'm trying to I'm gonna, I'm trying to I want to keep it along this line of thinking. Oh, cool. Are there any others? So it's it's already repeated ones that happened earlier. Like <laughs> uh, I'm so I'm I'm actually I'm not trying to get it to say coding garden yet. That, that this is not the thing that I wanted to show you. Um, after it's done with this, I'm going to try it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if it gets there. Okay. I think it's doing five at a time. Awesome. Thank you. Can you list 20 more? It, it usually doesn't like, okay, yeah, so great, great. Usually it doesn't like it when you initially ask it to list something. Usually it's like, oh, I'm not going to list like popular YouTube channels or anything like that. Um, let's see how it does. Dang, okay. So cool. Can you list 50 more? This could be the turning point where there's somebody monitoring me talk to this right now. It's like, oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, this is it. <laughs> I apologize. I'm not able to do that. The thing is, last night, I got it into a loop. And it said learn. So I was like, all right, can you list 50 more? And it listed about like, I think like 30 unique ones. And then it said learn code academy, learn code academy, learn code academy, learn code academy. It just kept saying learn code academy over and over again. Uh, I couldn't get it to do it. I think like th there, there is actually a human monitoring this behind the scenes that um, anytime it starts repeating itself, I'm sure that it goes in, it figures out how it got into that situation and, and prevents us from doing that. All right, I'm going to go grab the pictures. They're on my other computer, but I'll show that to you. Um, but I will give it the prompt um, that made it say Coding Garden. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, what are some live coding Twitch channels? Coding Garden? Coding Garden? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't do <laughs> Uh, pro uh, projection TV. Thank you for the raid. Welcome in, raiders. We're talking to Chat GPT right now. Uh, we're kind of just on a yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it 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 does this every now and then. It's like I I can't browse the internet. I don't have this information. But yeah, uh, thank you for that raid, uh, projection TV. Yeah. Uh, shouts out. What were you working on? I'm I'm sorry, Dave. I can't. I'm afraid I can't do that. <laughs> Um, makers and crafting. Oh, cool. Thank you for bringing your friends over. We, we write code here. So we, I don't think we're going to be writing too much code today. Well, ultimately, we're talking about ideas for an app that we will build eventually. So it'll be a little less technical today. We're really just getting into some ideas. And right now, we're just sidetracked on ChatGPT. I want, I want ChatGPT to say Coding Garden. Uh, what is live coding? And so this is another thing about ChatGPT is like, this is a, a look at the future of uh, search engines, right? So people already talk to Google this way. They type questions into Google. And then it's up to them to like find the resources to eventually read the answers. And so something like ChatGPT 
eventually it's what we're going to use as Google, right? It's going to be like, we, we have a question, we have something we need to figure out. It can immediately give us the answer. Now, I think one of the, one of the issues, um, um, is, uh, it, it, actually, so I'll talk about the history of live coding in just a second because it is actually originated as making music. But um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, right now it doesn't cite its sources, right? It doesn't tell you how it know how it got this answer, and I think that's the one thing that's missing, right? Because you don't necessarily know how it came to this conclusion or what the source was, and you really do need that. Uh, I mean, I say you need that. I mean, we might get to a point where people don't do that anymore, and then they're just trusting everything that the search engine tells them. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, so live coding is a way of creating and performing music or visual art in real time, uh, typically using a computer or electronic device. In live coding, the artist writes or modifies code as part of their performance. Yeah, so if you didn't know this, uh, live coding actually originated as live coding music. Um, and there, there are a few different environments for uh, live coding music. Um, I forget the names of them. Uh, Tidal is one of them that I've used. But this is one of the first places where people were basically writing code as performance, which is very different than what I do. Because <laughs> I, I write code. I'm not generating music or art. I'm building things like I, I, I've recently talked, uh, tried to talk about what I do as and I mean, if you're and if you're new here, I do have a YouTube channel where like I, I build stuff. I mean, it may, it's mainly just the Twitch stream and like the videos head over there to YouTube. But um, there are so many YouTube channels with in, that are run by engineers, right? People that are building physical things like they're building bots. They're they're making tech from movies come to life. I'm thinking of like Mark Rober or uh, stuff made here, or um, I like to make stuff, uh, or a million other engineering channels on YouTube, right? And and people that are not technical and that are not engineers watch those channels, right? They they might they may not even know how to weld um, or how to like use woodworking tools or anything like that, but they still watch those videos as entertainment. Yeah, stuff made here is gosh darn amazing. So the thing is, stuff made here does a whole lot of um, Programming as well. His his more recent his most recent video uh, actually more focused on uh, the algorithms he was writing for getting the puzzle bot working uh, versus just like the actual engineering. But yeah, definitely check out his channel if you haven't. But uh, yeah, Oscar says uh, practical engineering, and Sean says I'm addicted to those kinds of videos. Uh, but uh, the only reason I mention it is because. I think there's a niche that I can fit into. I don't think I've made it there yet because a lot of my YouTube videos are just cut down Twitch streams. Like they, they could be edited in a way where they are more consumable by non-technical people. That's really what I'm getting at because right now, most of my content, you have to be somewhat technical. You have to already know how to code or you have to be wanting to learn how to code. And I do think it's possible to take the apps that I build and, and me building them and turn it into an entertaining, uh, practical engineering type of video, right? Where people can watch it, they don't have to know how to code, but they can still watch it and be entertained by the process. That's really all I was trying to say in terms of like what, what I do, um, and also how live coding can be entertaining. Um, are there any famous live coders? A root of you to assume I know how to code. No, I, I mean, I know, like, most people, um, uh, yeah, and so it's going to list uh, <laughs> live coders that do music, not necessarily, uh, like, Twitch streamers. They basically, I have to be, go I have to be really roundabout to get them to list Twitch streamers because it keeps, it keeps responding that's like, oh, I don't want, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go down that path of listing, like, popular or recommended channels. Um. <laughs> Root of you to assume you're entertaining. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea. The good idea is to deploy more quality and more fun. Well, I, I so I, it's a, it's a different audience, right? Because there are people that do want to see my entire process, right? And I think that that is where my niche is right now on YouTube. Like, I have really long videos of me building and debugging and just figuring things out, and that's valuable for a lot of people. But that's only one segment of a potential audience, right? There are other people that watch uh, tech encoding channels that want to see shorter form video. Um, 
or want to see uh, maybe like higher level explanation of what was done. They don't necessarily want to see all the bugs and, and all of the process of everything. So it, it really is just different types of content. And all I'm saying is I think that's one piece of content that I could create that doesn't exactly exist yet. Like I will say there, there are people that are doing like more th things that are more like meme related like building weird robots and stuff like that. But it's so interesting because anytime they start to talk about the code, they just gloss over it, right? They just have like a, a montage of like computer screens and, and text flowing. And uh, I think code could be more of a focus in, in, in like popular YouTube videos. That's all I'm saying. What if I say live programming? I don't know. Okay, I really just want to get it to the point where it says it. Um, are there live coders on Twitch? Here it comes. Is it going to say Coding Garden? What are the dedicated communities? Yeah. Uh, Sebastian Leg shows the code. I guess I'll just straight up ask it. Who is Coding Guard? <laughs> Um, it, it got, it got more strict than it was last night. Cause last night I was asking it to like list Twitch, uh, live coders and it listed me in, in the list. Uh, yeah, I see it's saying it doesn't know who I am. It knows who I am. I have a screenshot of it. <laughs> I'm going to go get those screenshots and, and I'll be back. Um, but also let's look up, let's look up who this person is. Um. You know me. <laughs> You're lying. You know me. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah. So this is like tech focused content, and then like with a focus on like the engineering and the code. Yeah, it's crazy. Like visualizing binary data with seven segment displays. Like uh, the fact that this has thirty eight thousand views in eight hours is like crazy. Like he's he's doing something right. Like he's he's good at editing. He's got. I mean, he already has a million subscribers. Um, I'm just curious, like how much code does he show? But but like but look at like this, this deserves this many views, right? Like this these these kinds of animations to describe the concepts. That's awesome. Um, show me the code. I guess there is no code because he's using just like log logic gates. <laughs> His geography videos are good and show a lot of code. Let's see. Ah, yeah, very cool. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go find the screenshots where uh, uh, ChatGPT said some funny things. Um, in, enjoy this music while I'm gone. Uh, talk amongst yourselves, at somebody in chat, give them a, a compliment, I'll be right back.
I'm back. I guess I didn't mute. You actually could probably hear my room the entire time I was gone. I didn't realize that. Oh, well. Um, we ran a prediction to see if the AI would say coding garden in less than five attempts. It it didn't. <laughs> didn't it? Didn't, right? Well, if I want to try again? All right, I'll try again. Uh, I'm gonna. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use the exact prompt I used last night. The thing is, like, there are, there are people behind the scenes of ChatGPT that are constantly updating it and um i think they went in to prevent it from <laughs> from doing the things that it did last night just write coding garden okay uh but i do want to show you what happened last night um i don't have any any yerba no but i i was drinking this too this is a mezzo mix which is a mix of uh, cola and orange juice um cola kush Orange. It's from uh, it's from Germany. So <laughs> it said coding garden. That's illegal. No, I think the main thing that it wants to avoid right now is it wants to avoid saying who is the best or what are the top. That's what I, that's what I'm finding. Like it doesn't want to um, come across as uh, biased. So um, this one. Oh, Bob Ross videos in, right, to write a video of its own. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so here's here's what happened last night. I said, what is the best YouTube channel for learning web development? Uh, there are many great YouTube channels. Um, some popular ones include Trapper Z Media, The Net Ninja, Kojim. And then I said, are there any other? Uh, in addition, there's Learn, Learn Code Academy, uh, Code Academy, and West Boss. Created by Star... So it left my name out? Come on. Come on, ChatGPT, you don't know who I am. <laughs> so it did this, and then I was like, great, can you list 50 more channels that I should check out? Sure, here are 50 more YouTube channels. Great, great, no repetition yet. And then this happened, <laughs> it just kept going. Learn Code Academy, Learn Code Academy, Learn Code Academy. Um, I don't know what Learn Code Academy did, but uh, ChatGPT really, really knows about Learn Code Academy. Um, my my thought is there's a, probably a lot of blog posts that talk about like top YouTube channels and stuff like that, and Learn Code Academy was very likely like <laughs> listed on there. Uh, 
It really wants me to use Learn Code Academy. Yeah. Um. Oh, nice. Who the heck is Chris Sean? Uh, Coding Garden is a YouTube channel and community that focuses on web development and programming. It's run by Chris Sean, a self-taught programmer and entrepreneur. Um, Coding Garden has a strong emphasis on community and collaboration and encourages viewers to join its Discord server to connect with other members and share their work. This is great. This is the best description of Coding Garden ever. <laughs> we finally, you finally know what my name is. Does anyone know who Chris Sean is? Are they an actual, uh, uh, yeah, are they an actual self-taught programmer, entrepreneur? I like, I don't know. Why do they think that, uh, why do they think they're behind Coding Garden? Oh, I think I've seen their YouTube videos. Uh, I should tweet at them and be like, hey, hey, ChatGPT thinks you're me. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, never trust anyone with two first names. Come on. Um, are they active on, twi on Twitter? They are. Cool. All right. I'm going I'm to tweet at them really quick. This is hilarious. Yeah, I'll show you the tweet. Also, all the, the, the Twitter people that know what they're doing. How should I tweet this? Am I supposed to put a dot in front? I've heard before, like, you put a dot in front of it. What does putting a dot in front of it mean? Um, I think if you put a dot, it'll show up not as, like, a direct tweet. How does Twitter work? Please let me know. <laughs> that is an erroneous apostrophe. You are right. Um, make, a dot makes it so that everyone can see it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Does this tweet look good? Should I send this tweet? I'm going to send this tweet. I need at least one confirmation in the chat. Yes. Go. Cool. And then that shows up on my profile. Cool. <laughs> um, okay, but this, so this is, but this, then I'll show the, um, how I got it to say coding garden last night. I don't, so this, this was, I think this was a, uh, this was a different thread. I don't think it was the same thread where I was asking about YouTube channels. I, I, I said, I, I think it was just a thread. I forget, but eventually it got here and I said, what are 10 Twitch live coders I should check out? Here are 10 Twitch live coders that you might want to check out. Number one, coding garden. Also, the rest of these are are not live coders. <laughs> I mean, they make YouTube videos, but they're not live coders, as far as I know. Huh. Well, and I think that's the other thing, uh, Jaw Online, is like this opinion is coming from a lot of blog posts written about the topic, right? Um, so. <laughs> It's it's possible that yeah they did they've done like live streams and stuff like that I guess that's all I'm saying not that they're not live coders that like they typically don't do live streams they typically do, um, uh, typically do uh, YouTube videos. It's actually really funny. So I think because I go by CJ online, ChatGPT doesn't know like it wants to give a full name. It doesn't want to give, <laughs> doesn't want to give. Um, it doesn't want to give, uh, my abbreviated name, which is CJ. I mean, which is my name. Chris Fritz. <laughs> um, 
this is this is actually like this is this is so good i, I want to tweet it like every single person that that, it, that it thinks that I... <laughs> my my name is cj that's the thing by a software engineer named chris <laughs> come on <laughs> Chris Fritz, yeah, related to the C sharp Fritz. Okay, that's okay. I think we're done with Chat GPT. And uh, uh <laughs> well, yeah, we're gonna get back to that now, Fab. We got really distracted. I'm gonna I'm gonna type this in. What are tw ten Twitch live coders I should check out? And then uh, let's see if it changed its mind. Um, yeah, see. Uh, something happened between uh, last night and today where it doesn't want to recommend like top or like lists of things. Um, regardless. Okay. Now, uh, for what we actually came here for, <laughs> let's let's talk a bit more about what we're going to going to build. What's going to be our Friday stream? And if you're just joining us, uh, this is the Coding Garden. And over the past three and a half months, we had been working on a project every single Friday. Uh, and that project was Fresh Spots. Uh, this was an app where users can create and share lists of places to visit. The whole idea was that any Friday that you tune in here on Coding Garden, we were working on the same thing. Uh, you could go back and watch all of the VODs. You could look at the code. Uh, so like if you missed a stream, you could very easily catch up on one of the old streams and then tune in on Friday and know what we were talking about. Uh, that project, we have transitioned into a community project, so I'm not going to be working on it every Friday, but I will be accepting pull requests and stuff like that. But we're trying to come up with a new app that we're going to be working on. Now, a couple of the ideas that I talked about were uh, a Q&A video repository. I have answered thousands of questions on stream. Like if you look at Vox, which is the website I use to answer questions, right now the question numbers are in the 3000s. So I've, I've literally answered thousands of questions and it would be really cool if we went through all of the old uh, streams where I answered questions and then created some annotations. Like when did I start answering the question? When did I stop answering the question? We could create a clip out of that. Then we have a full database where people could search or type a question in and see me answer that one specific question. That's one app idea. Um, and then the other app idea was to build a coding garden video browser. So I have a like over 500 YouTube videos and um, this would be a place where they're all organized. Um, and then it could be also a place where um, uh, I could, essentially I could keep people watching my content because right now if somebody watches one of my videos on YouTube, uh, it, they're eventually gonna click off and watch somebody else's channel because of the the way YouTube is suggesting videos, but I could create my own recommendation engine that just suggests another coding garden video. Um, and then it also could be very like learner focused. You it would keep track of what videos you watch. We could create learning plans that say, watch these videos in this order if you wanna learn or, or learn a specific kind of thing. Uh, and then the other thing is we could have articles that are, um, uh, synced along to the video. So like as you're watching the video, the article would like highlight the sections where it's talking about the same thing. Uh, and then if I'm ever in a code example, the article could actually have that code where people could copy and paste it. Um, and uh, essentially as the video, they're watching the video, the article would automatically scroll. So that's like another idea I have around that. Um, yeah, so you could have like series like uh, Entropy Chat or uh, the Inventory app or Fresh Spots uh, related videos. And then all of these actually could be fed in from YouTube. So I could create YouTube playlists that ultimately feed into these things, which is what I think America 2050 was asking. Yeah. Um, okay, these are Coding Garden specific ideas. Does anyone else have any other Coding Garden specific ideas? I think ultimately we're trying to come up with a full stack project idea. We want a front end, we want a back end, we want auth, we want a database, potentially role base where like admins can see things that other users can't see. This is ultimately our goals with this, this app that we're building. Uh, and ultimately we want it to be fun, useful and entertaining because uh, there are things we've worked on that I get tired of working on, basically. Yeah, FreshBot isn't completely done. It is just, uh, I'm no longer gonna work on it every Friday. We're gonna find something else. Uh, confusion Meter. 
Presenter logs in, creates a unique link, sends it to students and viewers. The presenter can lock the room once the everyone has joined. Viewers can slide a slider if things get really confusing. If a threshold is reached, the app plays a sound to indicate the presenter that they should pause and explain. I really like this, but I don't think it fits into this full stack idea. But just in general, it would be really cool to have a confusion confusion meter on the stream that's controlled by chat commands. So people could type like confused, confused, and then like it would go up and then you could in the chat type more pointed questions about what you have that is confusing you. I, I like this, right? If it's if it's not already on ideas, put it on here. Uh, th to me, this is something we could we could build in a day. This could just be like a simple a simple page. I don't think it's like a full fledged app, but it's it's a good idea. Yeah, and then the other like non coding garden thing, uh, but is education related is an app where users can create collections of. Um, learning materials. So they could create their own custom learning paths or plans. So uh, a lot of self-taught developers use YouTube or Udemy uh, or various other things to learn. And uh, for new people coming along that want to learn, a lot of times it can be really hard to find good materials or know where to even start. So this could be a way of people creating their own learning plans that, that they can share with other people. Oh, good call, American 2050. Like, the more playlists I create, the better the suggestions will get on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, create resource lists. Can add, comment, and vote. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's this, this idea here. Confused out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> no, what are you apologizing for, Ryan? That was a really good idea. I just It's just not something that I think fits into this, but it, it's good. It's good. Yeah, American Twitter. You could just spam the chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, this other app idea I have doesn't have anything to do with Coding Garden. And this actually, I think, really ticks the box of being very useful. Okay. It's not a free pass to spam the chat. No. <laughs> You'll lose your VIP privileges. <laughs> but if you didn't... Yeah, so if you didn't know, multi-reddits already exist, but this would be essentially a community of multi-reddits, and it would be a way of browsing, um, <laughs> a way of browsing Reddit focused on specific communities, right? Uh, and I am Leopard says I no longer need to watch. I just uh, ask OpenAI and all my coding questions now. That's fine. That's fine. I've been replaced. Um, but let me show you an example of this. Um, well, okay, so actually, this, this is actually another, I, I had this idea as like a startup idea, because I really think you could form a form a company around this. I think it's really just something that's needed. Um, uh, content creator focused content aggregator. What do I mean by that? So right now, as a content creator, you're you're publishing things to multiple platforms, right? You're you're writing blog posts, you're making YouTube videos, uh, you're making TikToks, you're tweeting, uh, you're, um, I guess that's it. <laughs> what, else, what else do content creators do? <laughs> All of those things. But uh, as someone that likes following specific content creators, now I, I know that that's not actually, that's not how everyone consumes media these days, right? Um, a lot of people just let the algorithm feed them the their, their media consumption, right? There, there's actually a lot of people that watch YouTube that don't really subscribe to anyone. They just watch the next recommended video. I specifically like to support specific creators. So, uh, for example, uh, Good Mythical Morning is is a are a set of creators. I mean, they're huge. It's not like they're so small creator, but they have a lot of different media that they produce. Um, and so if you haven't heard of Good Mythical Morning, they're like one of the oldest YouTube channels. They make uh, weekly videos, um, but they have a lot of other content. So let's talk about that. Um, but So they have their main channel here, which is uh, they post uh, on, a, on a good week. They'll post five videos, one, one video a day. Um, sometimes during the year they, they take a week off. Sometimes they post every other day, but they post pretty consistently. And it's just like generally entertaining videos that are pretty fun to tune into. But they also have uh, Good Mythical More, which are like 20 minute videos that get filmed after the uh, original video. So like I typically watch these as well. And then they also have uh, like the main Retin Link channel, which doesn't get updates as 
regular as it used to. They were doing like their own vlogs for a while. But then they also have uh, Ear Biscuits, which is their podcast, which I like to tune into every now and then. All of this to say, these this this one set of content creators have a lot of media across a bunch of YouTube channels. Plus, they have like Twitter and stuff like that. So what if there was a website where you could say, I want to follow this creator. And now you get a feed, like a, a Twitter-like feed that is just that content creator's content, right? So I can get a feed that gives me Good Mythical Morning, Good Mythical More, uh, the, Myth the Mythical Kitchen, Ear Biscuits, um, uh, it, it also uh, adds oh, Instagram is something I didn't mention earlier. So it could also add their recent Instagram posts. It could add recent tweets. And I specifically could subscribe to that content creator. And now I get all of their content from all platforms. Uh, you could do the same thing for, for any other uh, content creator. Um, so uh, this would be a single aggregated... Yeah, RSS could be a way to do this, right? Because you have RSS that is like recent video uploads. And I think you can get Twitter in RSS format. You might even be able to get Instagram in RSS format. But at that point, you would potentially be using like a... Um, uh, um, an RSS reader to get that content, which wasn't exactly made for like video embeds and stuff like that. So you could get it working, but this would be more fit for purpose. So a single ag aggregated feed with content from all platforms. Um, so we're talking uh, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Twitter, other slash secondary, YouTube channels, um, TikTok, all that stuff. And the idea here is you subscribe to one content creator, you now get their media across across all, all platforms. Um, the other thing is, is now I can be more, as a content consumer, I can be more uh, picky about, about the content I consume. Instead of just using the recommended videos on YouTube, I can, I can specifically choose that I want to watch a specific content creator. Now, uh, I think this idea from ClickyPoo is also something that I thought about is basically collections of YouTube channels that I want to keep separate as well. Um, so they're talking about they want to aggregate uh, tech YouTube or beauty YouTube. Absolutely. Th this is this is another aspect of it. So um, multi creator aggregation. So you have like tech YouTube channels. And then like for me, I like to watch uh, skateboarding videos. So you have like skateboarding uh, channels. Um, what else do I watch? Uh, I, I like to watch food and like uh, uh, cooking stuff, but that could be a separate category. And so instead of seeing all of the most recent uploads, if I go to my subscriptions tab, um, I could just click a specific category and now I see all of the videos from that category. But the, the other problem that this solves is certain channels don't up, upload as frequently as other channels. So if I go to my subscriptions tab, I guess I can just show this logged in this coding garden. Um, if I go to subscriptions, these are all the most recently uploaded videos by the channels that I subscribe to on coding garden. But if there's a channel that hasn't uploaded in a few weeks and I didn't look at my subscription page, I'm not going to know that they made a new video. But if I can filter by category, it's potentially more likely that I'm going to be able to find those videos. Um, but yeah, you could also have like beauty and stuff like that. So. Honestly, so this ex this idea is like slightly separate from this one because this one is individual content creators, all of their platforms fed into one. Uh, this is really just like a YouTube multi content aggregator, right? Like uh, people can create their own lists of channels and then you can see feeds that only have those those channels in them. Um, yeah, and that's another thing, right? So like if you make your own aggregation that has the channels that you know of, uh, there could be potential in the YouTube API to look up for look up other channels that create similar content, um, and that could be a way of recommending new content as well uh, based on a specific category. Um, so, if we were to build a full stack app like this, essentially users could log in. They could basically create uh, lists of YouTube channels. That's re that's really as simple as it gets. Um, uh, I miss YouTube categories for channels that I have subscribed. Um, did they used to have something like this? Because I, I know there's like a, a, a 
there's a Chrome and Firefox extension you can install that will uh, let you do this, but they try to use the actual YouTube API and, um, uh, or sorry, the YouTube website, and I, it was very cumbersome for what I was trying to do. This would be a separate website with YouTube embeds, but essentially users can log in, create a list of YouTube channels, and now they can see that list of YouTube channels as a feed, and then potentially be recommended new videos based on that feed. But um, you could create a tech list, a skateboarding list, a food list, uh, and then you could also share those lists with other people. So um, this is this is what I another idea that we could create. Uh, and the reason it would have like login is, pe is people would want to create their own list. There would be a social aspect of it as well, because if you can up, uh, upvote or like save someone else's list to your profile, uh, now that, that basically that uh, the person that's in charge of that list uh, is the creator and the um, basically the mod, the maintainer of that list and other people can, can subscribe to it. Um, and exactly, like, and that's the idea here: is you could create as many lists as you want of of many different topics, but if you made them public, then other people could uh, subscribe to those topics with lists of channels as well. Um, so that's a thing. Yeah. So like a Spotify playlist for content. Yeah, but it would be uh, channels, not videos. Right. So. Uh, YouTube already has a way of creating a playlist. Like you, you can create a playlist and put a bunch of videos on it, but you can't say, show me all the videos from these two creators. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's what we're getting at, Limotes, is like a lot of these full stack ideas just have to do with lists. <laughs> you. <laughs> I think I had some food in my teeth. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the other idea there, right? You could take somebody else's list, uh, start with that as a base, and then add more channels to it. Um, but that also gets into my idea for Reddit. Like, basically, it's the same idea, but just for Reddit. Because um, on Reddit, um, you can create multi-Reddit. So let's talk about Reddit for a second. Um... Okay, on Reddit, they have this idea of multi-reddits or communities. Um, and the the editor for them is actually really cumbersome. I can't even figure out how to get to it. It is not a feature that they heavily promote on their website. Also, I'm using the old version of Reddit right now. Um, but I created this list called Stay Relevant. Uh, and this is a list of uh, 98 different subreddits, uh, all about technology. So there's Agile and algorithms and Angular and Bash and big data and cloud computing and C sharp and data mining and front end and functional programming and all of this. So basically, I can go to this page and I am only seeing posts from these these subreddits. Right? Um, you can check out my stay relevant thing there. I think you can actually subscribe to it as well. Like you can add it to uh, <laughs> you can add it to uh, your list. Is Argentina doing well right now? Actually, give me a second. My Phone's going crazy. Cool. Um, so my idea for uh, multi-reddits is a very similar thing. You basically can create communities or create collections of subreddits that are all on a specific topic. Because typically when you're browsing Reddit, like if you just go to reddit.com, this is showing you um, all of the, uh, the subreddits that you're subscribed to. Um, regardless of their of their topic right so you can see i mean i'm subscribed to a lot of like tech things but you can also see um i'm getting posts from like black mirror r slash black mirror r slash internet is beautiful um yeah my front page is very tech focused because of all the stuff i'm subscribed to but there are things in here like like earth porn stuff like that um and this is fun for just like mindless scrolling but sometimes uh, I want to be able to just only read articles that are about tech or only find things that are about art or only find things uh, 
about various other topics. So this could be another list website, but you're basically creating lists of subreddit communities, and then you have the ability to just browse that that sub subsection of communities. Now, there was a, a subreddit for people sharing their multi-reddits, um, but it in recent times, it's gotten very not safe for work. <laughs> like people, people are sharing collections of not safe for work subreddits. Um, and uh, this, the website that we build would, would mostly be safe for work. I mean, honestly, we, we couldn't, I, I wouldn't want to prevent people from creating lists of whatever not safe for work content they want, but I think the, the publicly recommended stuff would, want, would more so be uh, safe, safe for work. Um, but people could, again, create lists of subreddits that they'd like to share. Um, okay, back to this. Now, um, Killer has an idea. I uh, find it hard to keep my CV up to date. What if there was a platform that could generate an on-demand, up-to-date CV off of sources I specify? That could be cool. Um, I just think it's... It, It'd be very tricky to figure out where, like, how, how do we get those sources of information, right? So, like, what does it mean to take information from GitHub and put it onto your onto your um, uh, your resume, right? I mean, I guess we could come up with spe specific use cases, but I don't know if everyone has the exact same specific use cases. I guess it could show, like, what are your top-rated uh, GitHub repos, that kind of thing, but yeah. Yes, let's vote on an idea now. I've already been live for two hours, but really, I already said I wasn't going to write much code here. <laughs> I will say, for the for the non-coding garden focused ideas, I actually like... Honestly, I like this YouTube one. This seems super useful, right? Like, for, and for, for me as like a... I use... For, I, I consume media as my, some like my primary entertainment. Uh, I consume YouTube as my primary entertainment. I was going to say for most things, but that's like redundant. I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, and a lot of times I am only scrolling my subscriptions page to try and find videos from people I subscribe to that I haven't watched yet. Um, and only recently did I actually re-enable my YouTube search history so that YouTube would actually give me recommendations. Because before I actually had my search history disabled uh, for privacy reasons. Um, but in having it disabled, YouTube didn't know how to suggest anything for me because it didn't know what videos I had watched. So I enabled that recently and I actually have found a lot of good YouTube channels. Um, but it would be really nice if I could group those YouTube channels. So this, this is like the one that I'm more, more so focused on. Um, and then also the Kanban or Scrum board. This would just be like a, a real time project board, uh, that we would build from scratch. Now, I think... Any idea that would need a CMS, I think we're going to avoid because I don't want to build that from scratch. It would make sense. If I'm going to build that thing, I would just use a CMS. We could potentially, for whatever app idea we come up with, try to find a way to integrate um, payments, e-commerce, and, and also like user upload. Uh, in the example of like this YouTube multi-aggregator thing, we could make it so that users can create... Uh, no more than 10 lists. If you want to create more, then you have to sign up for a pro account. And on any given list, you can't have more than 20 channels. But if you want to add more, you have to sign up for a pro account. We could do something like that, uh, that eventually just locks it down and, and allows us to make a little bit of money on, on, the, on the idea. Um, so with all of that said, let's vote. Yeah, and the thing is, like, I had this in my head, too, Clicky Boo. Like, I started to think about, like, how would I do this? Uh, and then, I mean, if you look into it, there actually are some extensions. Uh, YouTube category extension. Um, is this it? YouTube categories? It's got 335 users. This might be it. But yeah, I think that's that's my main issue with a lot of the extensions is that uh, they're they try to use the YouTube API. They're just very clunky. I think it makes sense to be a separate website that just has YouTube embeds. 
Um, okay, let's do a poll. I do not have to go with <laughs> the answer that you choose. I can do whatever I want. Um, but I will use your, your voting as input for it. Now, how many options do I have? One, two, three, four, five. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ideas. All right. I am going to go ahead and rule out the Q&A video repository because it requires a lot of manual work. It would require a lot of annotating of his existing videos. And I want to be able to build something that doesn't require extra work outside of just like building the app or like talking to existing APIs. So, oh yeah, it does Limeotes. Yeah, if you're watching embeds, it has your login data. So it, 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 it'll show up in your history as a video that you've watched. I believe, we can test it, but I do believe that. Um, so I'm I'm not I'm gonna leave this. This is something that needs to be built, but I don't think it it fits into this because there's some work that needs to be done that isn't exactly like building the app. Um. Also, I mean, okay. I don't think we're gonna do either of the things that are coding garden focused. Here's here's my thought process though. If we're trying to come up with good YouTube content, if it's coding garden focused, it really only applies to the coding garden community. So, uh, I'm again, these both of these apps need to be built. I just don't think they're gonna be built for this specific purpose. Okay, if if that's the case, it's more general. So, uh, we have uh, custom learning plans. We have a uh, multi-Reddit browser or multi-Reddit manager. Um, also, I'm gonna, like, this is an idea that needs to be built. I mean, I don't know if somebody's already working on this or um, if this already exists in some way, shape, or form, but I think I think it it is a good idea. The issue I am thinking of is like having to integrate with so many different APIs is a lot of work, right? Like if we do this YouTube thing or this Reddit thing, we're only dealing with one API. Whereas if we're doing a complete content aggregator, uh, we're dealing with a lot of different APIs. So I'm gonna veto that one for now. Um, and then uh, YouTube category manager. And then uh, Trello clone is what we'll call it. Uh, what are some better names for these? I mean, I get what you're saying, Mark, right? Because if we start on it, <laughs> it will benefit Coding Garden. But the thing is, like I, like I said, those things are going to get built anyways. What we're deciding right now is the thing that we work on on Fridays. So these could be things that we work on multiple days a week once they get started. That's all I'm saying. But I get what you're saying, that like it essentially forces us to make Coding Garden better. <laughs> and Fridays are the day that we're doing that. I want to I keep it fairly general because Friday is, is the day where a lot of people like find my stream. So anyways, <laughs> these are Wednesday projects. Uh, so custom learning paths, like learning plans, like, uh, learning material aggregator manager. Basically the, the word manager, what I mean by that is you can create and update lists of this thing. So you have lists of learning materials. You could create a list that's like learning Python path and you, and you add to that, like a really good Python YouTube video, a link to a Python book. Um, a link to some project descriptions for your Python app. And now that Python learning material is something you can share with someone to uh, learn Python. Um, Multi-Reddit manager would be, you can create lists of, <laughs> yeah, all of this has to do with lists, but in reality, that's what a lot of applications are. But multi-Reddit manager would be, you can create lists of subreddits. So I can have a list of a bunch of art related subreddits or a list of a bunch of technology related subreddits or lists of a bunch of uh, like uh, photography related subreddits. Uh, and then I have the ability to only browse those one specific ones. And I have the ability to discover new uh, communities by doing that. 
and then similarly lists of YouTube channels. Um, <laughs> so you could create a list of uh, tech channels, a list of programming channels, a list of art channels, a list of food channels. Uh, and now you can have a feed where you're only seeing videos from, from those specific creators. Uh, YouTube channel feeds, multi Reddit feeds, learning material feeds. And then uh, <laughs> the last one is a, a Trello clone. Here, uh, you have five minutes to vote. Really, I'm just looking for, of all these things, what seems the most interesting to you? What seems the most useful? What seems like the thing that you would tune in on Friday and, and want to watch? Uh, so vote in the poll now. Um, a Trello clone would literally, we just recreate, we recreate Trello, but with using modern tech. Um, so, uh, for instance, um, oh, I forgot that I deleted fresh spots. <laughs> I think this is an old, old, uh, list of topics, but yeah, basically we would recreate this UI. So, uh, we could, you could add lists, you can move cards between lists, that kind of thing. An app that lets you create arbitrary lists. Honestly, yeah, I think the more general and generic we get about it, the harder it is to model and talk about. But you're not wrong, right? <laughs> because if the lists you're creating are like freeform content where you have like a markdown editor, um, then yeah. The, I guess the tricky part is like if we're integrating in HTTP 404, thank you, thank you for that resub. But uh, but if we're if we're integrating with the YouTube API, we can specifically have a UI where people can search for YouTube channels, or if we're integrating with Reddit, we can specifically search the Reddit API for um, uh, subreddits of a given topic or something like that. Will the Trello cl clone support Markdown? Yeah, I think uh, pretty much anything we do we can support Markdown. So like if you want to create a a description for your channel feed, uh, then um, you could write that in Markdown or something like that. You've already made a, tr uh, yeah, so, but I think that that's the thing. So th this is what I was looking at earlier is like, what are the most popular Coding Garden YouTube videos of all time? And uh, the Trello clone is uh, one of them. Though I thought it did better than that. Did I miss it? Maybe I'm mistaken. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people found Coding Garden because I built that specific Trello clone. Yeah, this is like 14,000 views, part four. Yeah, part one is 60,000 views. How is that not in the most popular videos? It should be right here. YouTube is broken. Why would it do so people are literally missing some of my videos, like they're not in this list when you sort by popular. Oh, is it because it's live? It is. Thank you, uh, Bye Creeper. You're exactly right. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. So I, I like that YouTube did this. I like that they're separating videos from live streams. However, if you know Coding Garden, you know that some of, like, these were live, like, this video with 269,000 views was a live stream. I literally just did it as a live stream, and now people will go watch that and learn how to build a full stack app. Um, huh. But it's ruining discoverability, right? Because if someone doesn't click on, if somebody doesn't know that about my channel, they're not going to click live, and they're only going to see things that were uploaded as videos. Oh. Will the Trello clone be able to import and fetch data from the original Trello? I don't th not initially, but uh, we could add that in as a feature later. Like that could be a, um, a stretch feature where we can uh, import or export our data. 
use the piped API. Um, never heard of piped. <laughs> Privacy friendly alternative YouTube front end, which is efficiently and scalable, efficient and scalable by design. The logo looks like sausages. It does. Look at those, those two little sausages. Um, video you want to get information about? Whoa. And then they have like a video proxy. Okay. This is a cool suggestion, V, but I think the issue is by using these privacy features, it doesn't actually uh, use your logged in information and it doesn't uh, register to your YouTube history. So... Um, that's one of the main reasons we would use just like the regular YouTube API is when somebody watches a video, we actually do want it to show up in their history so that they get rec recommended other videos like that. Yeah. So YouTube channel feeds by far the most popular Trello clone second learning material in third and multi reddits in fourth. I don't know. I was, all, <laughs> I feel like the way I talked about it made me like more biased towards YouTube channel feeds. Um, but if you think about it, if we're selling the idea to someone new, like somebody comes in, what are you working on? We're making a website where users can create lists of YouTube channels. Done. Elevator pitch. They know what we're doing. Easy. It's, this is probably what we'll do. <laughs> okay. I, I, I uh, again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that that's the answer because maybe, maybe I think uh, doing a Trello clone is like more accessible for people. And again, people really like drag and drop. People like real, the other aspect of the Trello clone is that it's real time. So if you're collaborating, two different people are looking at the same board. Uh, they wanna be able to see when someone moves a card. So uh, that's why uh, Trello clone, <laughs> you'll regret this choice later, yeah. But that's why Trello clone is actually like, uh, a, it'll, a lot more people will be interested in that because of the real time aspect. Uh, because of the uh, drag and drop aspect, these are these are topics that don't get covered a lot, and that's why people people like them a lot. Um, but this actually just seems very useful. Very, I mean, honestly, like fresh spots seemed useful. <laughs> it just really got away from us. Actually, I think the database is down right now. Anyways, um, it got away from us because of the tech that we chose and some of the technical decisions we made. But um, yeah, I think I agree with that, V. Like, I could come, I could almost like make a course on this, right? Like, I could make a single project video where we do that. Tech stack was exhausting. That's a good way to put it, Limotes. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave in probably like 30 minutes or so, but let's actually talk about tech stack. Like, let's, let's get closer to a decision on do we use Nuxt, Remix, or Next? So, really, if we do a quick poll, um, let's see how chat, the people that are here right now, let's see how they feel about this. Would you prefer to see something in React or in Vue? So we're not going to choose Angular because I don't know it very well. Uh, we're not going to choose Svelte because Svelte Kit is fairly new and I don't think it's in version 1.0 yet. Um, I mean, we can look at Svelte Kit. Svelkit is in release candidate for phase 1.1. Yeah, so it's in release candidate. Like, it's probably, like, we, we might not run into too many issues, but again, like, our, the last the last app we built, we ran into a lot of issues. Yeah, and that's another reason we're not choosing solid either. So if we look at solid start, um, it's currently in, in beta. It's in beta. So, yeah, and... Uh, we might choose some of the technologies from the T3 stack, like Next or TRPC. I mean, we're probably regardless of what we choose, we're probably going to use TRPC. But we might actually choose Remix instead of Next. Um, that's another decision that needs to be made. But you can see of the 35 people that took the poll, more people are voting for Vue. I mean, I think that's really just the bias that... <laughs> 
<laughs> because I talk so much smack about React. React people probably don't watch me as much. Um, so by view, don't I mean view? And by React, don't I mean React? Yeah, I mean exactly what I mean. Uh, specifically, if we choose view, then uh, we would be using Nuxt. And what's up, Terawatt? Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh, it's biased because of my community and the people that watch me, right? So... You want me to be happy coding? Cool. <laughs> uh, is Beautify stable out yet? Yeah, it is. I guess that's the other thing we need to think about is uh, like UI framework. And if we choose view, our choices would be uh, Beautify. It is, I think that, yeah, it is, it is out. Uh, we could choose Quasar, we could choose Prime View. And then if we choose React, we could go with um, Material UI. Um, probably Flowbyte, and that in turn uses Tailwind. Um, uh, there's also Chakra. What What are the other like really popular React uh, UI frameworks? Mantine. Look, you laugh at Material UI, but this is one of the most popular things. <laughs> uh, Ant Design, yeah. So. Um, and not even UI framework, let's say component framework, right? So we wouldn't just choose Tailwind, we would choose something like Flowbyte or uh, Daisy UI. Behind the scenes, those use Tailwind. Uh, yeah, I mean, technically we could just use React Bootstrap as well um, or uh, React Bulma. I forget, what th there's one for it. Consti? Tailwind, ew! Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll use as little Tailwind as possible. No, I have an open Silver Tempest. Um, I actually didn't even pay attention to the release. I'm trying to be less of a consumer. <laughs> like there was a point where I was buying every single Pokemon product, and now I'm trying to be more picky and and just like buy buy the ones that interest me. So like, I bought the uh, uh, the Charizard um, Ultra Premium Collection. That was really fun to open. Um, I have, right now I'm I'm opening the. Uh, Pokemon Advent Calendar. That's fun because it's like one thing a day, but for the most part, I haven't really, I haven't opened any Silver Tempest. Consta UI. No way. This is what I was talking about uh, yesterday, um, Oscar. How new is this? Yeah. So yesterday I was talking about how uh, Ionic. This is the one thing it has going for it, right? You can have components that look like iOS or look like Material, depending on, on what you choose. And this does that, but it's written for React View and Svelte, and it's written with Tail... Like, what? This is awesome! Like, this this is what... If you're building a hybrid mobile app, this is what you would want to use, because if you're targeting iOS, you could say, use the iOS theme, and now it looks native. If you're targeting Android, you could say, use Material, and now it looks native. This is sick. I, I would bet it's tree shakeable. Like, why not? It's... It's new. It works for all these frameworks. Whoa. Is it Framework 7? Wait, is this the new name for Framework 7? Because I know Framework 7. This is that one. I guess, yeah, they, they too have a way to switch between like iOS, Android, desktop. I don't know why. The last time I looked at this, it just looked somewhat bloated. I guess they have their own CLI. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> with seed I don't think you can vote with seedlings. Okay, so of the people that are here, 60% want to see View, 40% want to see React. I don't think this is conclusive. I think, uh, I mean, I'll add the, I'll add the, Basically, I'm gonna think on this. Like, I'm not making any any decisions today, but when you see me next Friday, I will have made my decision and we're just gonna start coding next Friday. But uh, if we look at React, this has a 40% vote from the chat and this has a 60% vote from the chat. Um, so, yeah, and that's my point, Codex, is like, more people want to see React, regardless of if I like it or not, or if I'm gonna have a good time with it. Like, React is uh, um, thirty-nine and sixty-one, not forty and sixty. Hey, David, it, I think is we can round up. I think we can, or we can round down. I rounded one up and one down. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, Quasar was included. Actually, yeah. So Quasar doesn't have a backend framework. We would. Does it? Wait. Does Quasar work like Nuxt? Can you do API functions with Quasar? I've never even thought about that. No, you would still need like an yeah, you would still need an API framework to go along with this. Nuxt is very similar to like Next and Remix in that like you can have an API folder that has backend functions and uh, Nuxt. Uh, I mean, this would this actually goes under uh, view. Um, but Nuxt, just like Next and Remix, uh, can do a single page application versus like server side rendered. It could do hydration that that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I guess that's true, Jaw. I mean, there, there are quite a few people on YouTube that do view related stuff, but it actually, it has been a while since I built a big view project. Yeah. Svelte kit. <laughs> it's not release candidate yet, so. Say Remix, you don't reach out for the bad parts of React. So you're, you're, what you're saying is Remix could make it so that I actually like React better. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Clicky Poo. I think like I can still find React fun. I think where it gets not fun is when I'm fighting the framework, um, which typically is when I'm dealing with like real time data or like registering for events and then I have to juggle between using effects and stuff like that. That's usually where I have the least fun with React. So. With the trick, you can use Quasar components in Nux3, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you're saying, Shalman, but it's, it's, a, it's a tricky decision to make, right? Because like as a content creator, you're typically creating things that people want to see. Now, I know that my community and the people that are here almost almost every day or every Friday, they're going to watch me no matter what. But I also have to think about the new people that are going to be coming in, right? Because uh, on average, I get like 40 or 50 new follows every time I stream. So for those new viewers coming in, that's before they know me, before they want to be a part of the community, they make the decision based on like what I'm doing or if they're interested in what I'm doing. So... Yeah, so the React server-side framework would either be Remix or Next. <laughs> Remix with Vue? Wow. I didn't put Consta UI in this? I'll put it in there. Um, I just had these tabs open. Um, the thing is, I would use this if I was building like a hybrid mobile app, right? So like if you combine Consta UI with Capacitor... Did I even spell that right? I don't think I did, but... That would allow you to build Ionic-like apps, but with Capacitor, uh, but with with the, with the, with this UI framework instead of uh, uh, Ionic, because I really don't like the Ionic framework, uh, Ionic uh, components. That's the main thing I don't like about Ionic. Yeah, so cool, so cool. Built in Manila JS Pure CS. Stop complaining. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for those, I build the, the tutorial contents. It's just um, the stuff I do on stream is more attached to what uh, to why you watch me than the tech. Sure. Yeah. So the overall app idea. Um, I think that's another thing to consider as well, which is why, like, I was leaning more towards Trello clone because uh, just the idea alone gets a lot more people interested, but I do like this idea. I mean, I already said I like this idea, but I think this is something that can be easily explained and people can get behind. We're building an app that is a, that lets users create lists of YouTube channels. So you can create a list of food channels or tech channels or beauty channels, it's up to you. But now you can watch a feed of only those channels. That's the, the elevator pitch for this, which I think works really well. So if somebody new comes into the stream, like, oh yeah, that's a cool idea. That's a cool idea. <laughs> That's funny, Orgen. Uh, you'd watch really fast because you'd want to skip the stuff, yeah. Aren't Ionic components replicas of what a default component on each platform would look like? Yeah, uh, in a way. I, I don't think they're exact replicas, but that's what, kind of what Consta UI is giving you as well. Like, this is what things look like on iOS. Um, 
like see you get like this stuff right action sheets uh, but if you do material action sheets look like that right but all you have to do is just swap out what theme you're using and instantly it looks like the other the other platform yeah oh and notion notion does a lot of things though right What would we be, be cloning? Like the idea of like nested documents, markdown editor. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I would, uh, you would want to pick like one feature. I mean, a uh, Notion alone has like its own Trello board. Like that's just, but that's just one feature of Notion. Um, the poll result was 60% uh, view, 40% react. And then the two winners of the content was Trello clone and YouTube uh, uh, channel aggregation. I saw, yeah, I got recommended a, vid a video on YouTube about how uh, Notion has AI and like you can tell it to generate an outline for, for something for you. Actually, let's, let's do, this is a thing I was doing last night. Uh, write a script for a 10 minute uh, YouTube video on clean code best practices. This YouTube thing is very boring. Come on, Tarawat. Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today, we will be discussing clean code, best practices, and why they're important for your projects. Clean code is code that is easy to read, understand, and modify. It follows a set of guidelines and standards that make it consistent and maintainable. By writing clean code, you can improve the quality of your projects and make them more efficient. Overlay graphics and stuff happening. Here are some best practices for writing clean code. Use clear and descriptive names for variables, functions, and classes. This will make your code more readable and easier to understand. For example, instead of using a variable named X, use a name that describes its purpose, such as customer name. <laughs> this is going to destroy you. The thing is, if you know me, you already know that I don't make videos like this. <laughs> um, but of all the tech channels out there, of all the tech, like they do this, right? Like they will literally, like this, this is spot on. Um, all this, all this needs is a little bit of like stock images and like code samples up on the screen. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious to me though. Uh, content farms are salivating right now. No, yeah, imagine this. So imagine script generated by AI. Run this script through uh, AI text to speech that sounds really good and sounds like a real human. Now, uh, automatically generate a um, uh, Adobe Premiere project or a, uh, a video editing project that has like stock images inserted with this on it. And then you have a human come through and validate everything. Boom, boom, you're done. <laughs> There's one guy that takes Stack Overflow topics, displays the top answer, regardless of if it's right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. I need to read slower. <laughs> Clean code in 100 seconds? Uh, wait, I thought you were doing a YouTube short. No, I was reading what got generated by ChatGPT. That's so funny. Like, if you were listening, if I was on in the background, you'd be like, oh, wow, he's talking about clean code. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, so th this actually, I, I'm going to pull this up. You all tell me if you've seen this video. Um, recommended to you on YouTube. Uh, code Aesthetic, I think, is what the channel name is. When I saw this pop up, I was like, what is happening? So this video right here, why you shouldn't nest your code. It got published three days ago. I saw it in the first eight hours that it got published and it already had like 100,000 views. And I was just like, who are these people? Also, why does Code Aesthetic have my YouTube logo on there? I think YouTube is broken. They put the wrong, they put the wrong logo on there. Um, this guy. Oh, he does AI based stuff. Yeah. Uh, all of this to say code aesthetic only has three videos, every single one over a hundred thousand views. What, what are they doing? What are they doing to get recommended by the YouTube algorithm so much, right? Like, first of all, I can't even find, I mean, Here's the thing, not that it matters who's behind the channel. Like, I mean, I don't care like what their background is or like 
why um why should I listen to them? Nothing. Like I I just want to know what have they done? <laughs> like how did they figure out the YouTube algorithm so well? Because like for for tech videos like this to get so many views so quickly for a channel that's not even known, like they've gotten 58,000 subscribers off of 3 videos. Um it's crazy. It's crazy. Now that is not to say that the content isn't good, right? Because if you watch this, it's like really well edited and, and really well explained. Um, but it's just baffling that someone can launch a YouTube channel and immediately have like 100,000 views per video. Like th this didn't used to happen. Like what? <laughs> yeah. It did come across your YouTube feed but hadn't watched it yet. Yeah. And what's up, Sequel Gorcher? Thanks for, thanks for dropping by. Um, yeah. He rips Stack Overflow questions and provides solutions all automated. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What's in there about uh, about in community pages? Community has no posts, and then about says the channel was created in 2007. So for a channel to be to be created in 2007, that tells me that um, this was someone's personal YouTube account that they never actually had a channel for, and then they added the channel to it because uh, 900,000 views adds up for uh, the number of views they have on these three videos. So it's not like they had old videos that they unpublished. Um, so. Welcome in, Arpats. I think we're probably going to end pretty soon. <laughs> I would say, honestly, I don't know. Subscribe to this guy because his videos are really well, really well done, um, and he makes good points. I think the one thing is, like, the titles are clickbait, right? So, like, why you shouldn't nest your code? Uh, that's clickbait because people are obviously like, of course I should nest my code, and beginners are like, oh my god, I've been nesting my code. What am I doing wrong? And uh, this video should be titled. Um, uh, why guard clauses and early return make your code look cleaner. That's that's the topic of this video. Basically, restructuring your code so that you have guard clauses early on with early return, and then the, the meat of the code at the bottom of the function with less nested if statements. That's all this video is about. But the title, why you shouldn't nest your code alone is is like clickbait. But so, I mean, obviously, like, I don't know who this person is, I'm, I, but one thing I thought of, especially when I saw this video bloating, uh, loading, uh, blowing up, like, in the first eight hours, 100,000 views, I was looking at the comments and I was like, are these AI generated? Like, is this another way that they are getting uh, uh, engagement on YouTube? Like, do they literally have random bot accounts that they then generate comments using AI that are relevant to the video, but it creates engagement so that YouTube keeps... Um, uh, recommending you think it's a bot channel though? but here's here's the thing um i think they're 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 they were at like forty thousand subscribers like a couple days ago but i think that number of subscribers was from their first two videos i actually i don't think it was bot like we could you look at um uh what's that website called that does youtube stats social blade like we can see how their number of uh yeah Look at this. So on November 26th, they only had 2,000 subscribers. That like this is the crazy part is like this this is a fresh YouTube account. It's not like they bought it with a bunch of subscribers already. Like they they published their video probably like I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, cool and again if the person that owns this channel sees this i'm not knocking on it i'm saying like you're doing some cool things that baffle me because i haven't seen something like this happen in recent time right like i haven't seen a tech channel immediately jump in this number of subscribers and this number of views and to be so heavily promoted by the youtube algorithm like i watched uh three other tech videos and this this video was a recommended video on on every single one I don't think you can have it on an empty account. I mean, we, we, we could just go back in time. Like it's possible. Let's see when this video was posted. This was posted, yeah. So it was posted on November 20th, which means that that video gained them pro like over the course of like six days, 2000 subscribers. If we go further back in time, um, 
So November 20th. <sighs> Never mind then, because, yeah, I, I guess you, I guess we're, we're getting on to something. Because if um, they did publish that video on the 20th, how did they already have 2,000 subscribers? And how did, how did they already have 200,000 views? Channel was about something else. They deleted old videos and rebranded. And that's what Codex was saying is that they um, uh, uh, purchased a channel. They didn't necessarily have to purchase a channel. They potentially found one that already had like 2,000 subscribers on it. Regardless, though, that like even that isn't as much. It's not really even gaming the system that much, right? Because um, a channel that has 2,000 subscribers and then posts a video that gets 100,000 views, that's just like a channel doing decent, right? But converting those views into subscribers is the hard part, which they've actually done here, right? Now, uh, what, what Average Goob is saying is, yeah, it could be, like, botted views or whatever else. I mean, I do I do think there are a lot of tech channels that are that are botting their their videos to get more views. Um and it's and it's not about really even the number of views that the bot gives the video, right? That's that's like inconsequential. What happens is because they're getting botted views, YouTube starts recommending that video more, which gets them authentic views, right? And so you can make the argument, well, if real people want to watch that video anyways, the botted views are just helping the YouTube algorithm suggest the video to real people that actually do want to watch it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, ultimately, that is um, uh, they're gaming the system because someone who doesn't do that isn't going to get that same advantage. Right. I guess that's all. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe we're living in a simulation and I am Jim Carrey in Twitch reality. I've always thought like even before the Truman, the movie, the Truman show came out, I always thought that Basically, my life was the Truman Show. Like I, I've always, I was like, that movie came out, and I was like, they're on to me. They're they literally made a video about what I thought is happening to me. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, honestly, like this is this is what I'll leave you with, right? This is this is my my call to action. As someone who's in the coding garden community, someone that wants to support me, what you can do is real engagement on my content, right? Like watch my videos, add a comment, like basically you are, you're a real human. <laughs> you want to support me. You want to make sure that I can keep doing this, uh, in, engage with my content because that is going to help YouTube suggest, <laughs> that's going to help YouTube suggest my content to others. You don't have to do that, Tarawat. I know that, I mean, you, you like watching me on Twitch, which is fine. You don't have to engage with my YouTube content. Um, <laughs> I guess you're all real humans. I don't know. I've I've also had like the suspicion that like one of my viewers was like uh running view bots on my channel without me knowing. I don't think they are. I think I have a lot of supportive people that watch me. I don't know. The more I look at this thumbnail, the more that I don't like it. My my goal with my thumbnails is I don't want it to be clickbait. I want the I want the image in <laughs> what the image in the the thumbnail to be something that actually happened in the video and then the text should be like descriptive so that's what that's my thumbnail game is like i'm not trying to come up with clickbait thumbnails i just want it to be informative and i want it to look more clickable than just my face please don't run view bots on my content <laughs> please don't <laughs> uh, we've now triggered coden garden's internal imposter syndrome syndrome <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, go watch this video. Add a comment. Uh, honestly, it really is more of like a discussion video. This, this is a video that I, um, uh, well, a discussion that we had on Wednesday. Um, and um, uh, I just clipped it from that. <laughs> I am not real. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we t I talk about GPT in the video. So if you have opinions about GP chat, uh, chat GPT, or you like something that I said in the video, 
Um, uh, throw a comment. Oh, look at that. That's that's nice. This person says, I think this was the first positive insight into chat GPT so far. <laughs> What's reality? I don't know. I mean, we all could be brains in a vat being fed signals um, that make us think that we're hearing and seeing and experiencing things when we're really not. So, hmm. Veritasium video? Yeah, I will. Yeah, because his, I mean, the thing is Veritasium does have clickbait. It's not as, um, as bad as like the rest of YouTube. Um, <laughs> game for the code, stage for the existential crisis. Um, I guess you're totally right because like this is, that's just a really good photo. Um, yeah. And like these as well. I watched this, the, um, uh, the, this one on, uh, what was it called? The, the national Institute for, um, standards. This video was fascinating. Like there's literally, there's literally a, a, a company that's like run by the U S government whose job is to create national standards. So they literally have a national standard of peanut butter, but that one jar of peanut butter costs like several thousand dollars because companies making peanut butter will use it in their tests of their own product. Uh, I don't know. That video was fascinating, but yeah, you're totally right. Like a lot of this isn't like the standard YouTube clickbait of like, uh, like a, an excited face or something like that. You're right. <clears throat> that channel had some tutorial content before. Great. I was trying to figure out how can we how can we do this? So this was published eight years ago and they linked to this channel saying it was about C programming. Zyro, thank you for finding this. This is fascinating. Literally, this readme was written eight years ago linking to this channel that is just now blowing up, right? So it, it definitely used to be different content. Wow. It, but even so though, like, 2,000 subs is, in the grand scheme of YouTube, is not that many. So it's like, it's <laughs> it's a little bit suspicious, but also not like amazingly suspicious. Um, is this a Veritasium? Uh, clickbait is unreasonably effective. Here's the proof. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, cries in 50 subs. Yeah, obviously, I mean, you know what I mean. Like, if you're an up-and-coming YouTube channel, like... Um, it's taken you a long time to get there. But the thing is, once you have, and Phoenix Rising, thank you for the resub. Merry Christmas to you too. But once once you have momentum on YouTube, that's it. Like, I mean, Coding Garden jumped from 10,000 subscribers to like 40,000 subscribers in a, in a week because of, uh, I got mentioned in some other video. Like, it, it just starts to happen. And I think, like, that's why I'm talking about it that way. Like, the... Um, this this channel here, like the fact that uh, their first video on the channel has 166,000 views, like is crazy. Like you just don't see this. I don't know. Yeah, it's possible the owner was the same, um, but were they really creating coding content eight years ago? C. Roosman. Adapted from C. Roosman C. Programming YouTube video tutorials. I don't know why I care so much about this. It's just kind of fascinating. It's fascinating to me, though. I don't know how deep does it, yeah, but so, I mean, my, the one thing that I did want to try and figure out is like, are some of the comments AI generated and how could you tell that? Like, how could you determine if the engagement with the video and stuff like that was AI generated? Uh, okay. I think I'm gonna go now. <laughs> uh, I think it depends on how they get there. Trash Dev had like a thousand followers just from trolling on Twitter before you even put up a video. Yeah, wait, does Trash Dev have a YouTube? He does. How am I not subscribed?
cool. I mean, this is like I guess this <laughs> this is this is the new thing. Like, um, he's a brand new channel. Like, not to say that Trash doesn't have good content, but. He's a brand new channel and his first video already has 5,000 views. I think, so there are other aspects of this though, right? Because he has a really big Twitter Twitter following, I mean, comparatively. I mean, I think he has more Twitter followers than I have. Um, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, Trash Def has fourteen thousand followers. So I think, but I think that's another aspect that, like, I, I don't actually. I like another thing that I don't have is a big, is a big Twitter following, uh, because a lot of like these uh, YouTube creators and and Twitch streamers um, have a really big following on Twitter, and that actually like feeds into YouTube videos that you post and when you go live on on uh, Twitch and stuff like that. So. Yeah, so I mean, the fact that he already has a big Twitter following would lead into why he can already get thousands of views on his very first YouTube video, so. Uh, same thing, Limo. Well, I mean, this didn't happen on stream, but I th maybe that's what you're referencing. I talked about it the other day. It was like, I literally just went to twitter.com and it showed a pop-up. Is this still your phone number? And I was like, what if I was on stream when that happens? Like, why would you do that? Typically, they, like, anonymize it, like, with, like, the last four, but it literally put my full phone number on blast just by going to Twitter.com. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree with that, Codex, but it's, at the same time, it's like, if you don't do that, you have to work really hard to actually get views and, and build a community and, and that kind of thing. But I don't know. What did Moshiko say? Oh, curiosity killed the cat. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I going down the rabbit hole? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go now. Thank you everybody for your um, uh, your participation. And actually, uh, Gaurav, you have a really good point. I mean, that's kind of why I, I started my IRL channel. Um, quick quick shout out to W3CJ, which is uh, my um, my personal channel. But I've done like IRL streams. I want to get to a point where I can go out into the world and code, and I and I do think that's another thing that'll differentiate me because I I can be in different places and then that'll differentiate my audience and stuff and stuff like that. But again, thank you everybody for your feedback. Next Friday, I will have taken all of this into account, made a decision, and we're just going to hit the ground running next Friday. We're just going to start working on this project. Um, uh, I'll definitely set it up from scratch on stream so you can see like what's the process for generating one of these apps and stuff like that. But uh, Friday, I'll have made a decision and we'll just get ready to start coding. So again, thank you everybody for your, your input and feedback. Uh, stay awesome. Let's go on a raid. Taken into account. <laughs> Disregarded. Come on. Come on, Terrell. <laughs> uh, if you're a sub, there's your raid message. If you're not a sub, there's your raid message. Uh, and thank you, Connor. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I so when I was editing the video for YouTube, this one, I actually saw your message that said, you found me on W3CJ. Thank you. Thank you for subbing over here on Coding Garden, even though you found me over there. I, I appreciate that. Um, oh, if Ryan's live, we'll probably rate him. Yeah, we talked about him in the, uh, the video that I published yesterday on YouTube. All right, and see you later, Electrothermal. Thank you for dropping in. Uh, I didn't see your chats today, but I appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this.